I remember when I was 12, my parents and I, we took a tour at the Walt Disney Animation Studio in Orlando. And it was wonderful to actually see an animation studio. But however, it was apparent that the secrets that they have was definitely elusive to the outsider. You know, because here as a tourist, we were behind a plexiglass. So that plexiglass was pretty much like a solid metaphor for like that veil is mystery. But um, so flashing forward, you know, I, I still wanted to learn animation, but just it was impossible at the moment, at the time, because in order to learn, you would have to go to out of state um university or a private college or even overseas and it was virtually impossible for me at the time earlier last year or so that i um started to take animation courses and i'm i'm telling you i have seen so many online animation courses but there was always so that veil of mystery flash forward um to this year, I came across AMB's um, YouTube channel, AMB Real Animators um, Training, and I was blown away. I just couldn't believe, you know, the knowledge that he was putting out there, the lectures that he was doing. It just pretty much ripped that veil of mystery off the face of the earth. And the thing that really sets his um, archive, his online, to, you know, lectures and stuff apart from everyone else is the basics. That's the one thing that a lot of the books, a lot of the online animation stuff lack was the extreme basics, you know. And when I started on that archive, I started understanding the spacing, the timing the arcs, the um, slow in, the slow out. And with each exercise, it builds up on each other. And as a result, I start seeing, you know, the arcs. I start understanding and timing things in my head. And it was just so fascinating. And because of that, it just helped revive, you know, my lifelong desire of learning animation and it just made me so happy that I'm able to pursue and to dream of becoming an animator. So thank you. So, are you going to join the library? Welcome, welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. I am back. I am back after a short break. Um, let's just say that the AMB household got hit with a rather nasty infection. Both me, my wife and my uh, daughter, we weren't feeling uh, the best of... Uh, Things. So no live streams for a while. I've had to uh, rest the voice and uh, make sure that I'm uh, healthy as quickly as possible. Um, although in the group, because this is what today's live stream is all about, uh, going into the global Real Animator Facebook community and looking at all of your um, all of your amazing posts. We've got quite a lot of posts to cover. Um, so I did announce in that group that I wasn't going to be uh, online for, a, you know, uh, for a while. Um, I didn't want to bring any energy to the fact that I wasn't feeling my best because I think even if people give you well wishes, you're giving energy to the fact that you're making yourself aware that you're not feeling well. So we don't want to give any energy to that, which is why I didn't look for any sympathy or anything I just said. I can't live stream so now I'm over it I've beaten it so um, I'm just here to uh, I can talk about it so that's where I was that's what I was doing but I was keeping myself busy I'm gonna show you all something you early few early people 
Uh, by the way, just give me some suggestions for the character breakdown while I'm doing this. I've, I've been keeping myself busy. Um, what have I got here? While I've been uh, getting better, I've made, made some use of my time. So uh, let's uh, bring this on the other screen. Let's just pause this. Let's show you what I've been doing. And I'm going to make a nice further live stream on this thing because I did say that I was going to take it further. Um, hang on, All right, so let's remember this. Well, this is what I did when I was in my um, when I was recovering, so um, nice, peaceful cleanup in between uh, exercises to recover. To I'm gonna add a background to that and uh it should be looking rather nice when it's got a background to it so that's where i was that's what i was doing um so right now i'm gonna say hello to some of you guys in the chat um and while i do that suggest your characters or if you don't suggest a character we will just jump straight into uh looking at the work in the group so we have got uh, Life Fantasy, the amazing Life Fantasy, how are you? We've got the absolutely adorable Kitchen Cat, good to see you. We have got Copper Star, um, shining, ever shining bright Copper Star. We have got Life Fantasy saying good to see you are better. Frilled Mayfly, we're going to be talking about some of Frilled Mayfly's posts in today's stream coffee lover haven't watched one of these in a while well you and i we both love coffee that's good enough um all right well we don't have any suggestions for a character breakdown so i don't know if life fantasy or frilled mayfly or kitchen cat uh, have anything that they can say um otherwise i'm just gonna i'm just gonna start looking at people's uh, work in the group and i might end with a breakdown because i've got to have a thumbnail you know i've got to have a nice thumbnail for, for for the video so um all right let's just go straight in and look at people's work in the group then and then and if if nobody comes up with a suggestion during the stream um i will just pick something myself uh okay right so let's get rid of it. all right now um let's jump straight into this uh if we go down we see that let's first get the the usual thing out of the way okay this is a uh, growth development and progress it is my free for all um community global facebook community um i had i have messages asking me about real animator training look if you can try before you buy here uh this is a free group for you know library members non-library members if you go to the featured section you get uh this thing called real animated training preliminaries basically it gives you nine free archives there's no catch to it you just go down here copy this passcode click on the link paste this in here and you are given uh nine free videos in the world's best learning resource now why isn't that working um is the password right paste submit okay let's just copy that i don't know why that's not working um anyway uh for some reason that's not working i'll have to look up up, up why that is and it's probably to do with my firefox memories but there is a link to nine free lectures uh from the real animator training library that is really pissing me off um i don't know why that's not happening i'll have to sort that out after the stream it's been a while since i've accessed that if somebody in the group can access that and let me know if that's all all right 
um, I can, you know, if that's not just my cash or whatever. Okay, so um, that is that. So go join this group. Uh, it's amazing. Now I'm going to look at people's work. Uh, so what have we got? We have, we're going to start, you, below here we've got Kevin Silver's turnaround, but he's been posting uh, progressions of that turnaround uh, th throughout the group, uh, throughout the weeks. Uh, that I've the week and a half that I've not been online so we're gonna come to that a little bit later we've got Cameron Allen Davidson Black here um, Cameron Allen Davidson Black has posted his uh, basic quadruped cycle um, this is his first attempt it's looking pretty good Cameron proportion wise it's a little bit off making it look a, a little awkward with that tiny little head there um, in the intermediate archive we do want to start getting our proportions a little bit uh, more intact as we're moving on from basics I know in the basics I talk about the walk cycle proportions don't really need to be so great but it would be nice to uh, balance it. Hopefully, as you progress through to the other cycles, we will solve this issue. Um, actually, it's looking pretty good. Um, you've got the anatomy in the pelvis. Uh, let me just put this on loop so I don't have to keep playing it. You got the anatomy in the pelvis working really nice. Uh, it's not, you know, you've got the shoulder anatomy working really nice. Now, there is a slight, uh, the, the up and down aspect on the thorax. You see this wave that happens with his back and front. While you've got the pelvis rotating and us seeing that nice change up there, we're not really seeing the wave in the spine on the back. So it, it doesn't really feel, it feels a little bit like there's a not not as good harmony between the front and back as it could be now this could you know this is this was my choice because the obvious thing to do and you can do it uh i know i say don't deviate but i want it i want i want you guys to really understand the relationship between the front and back the obvious thing would be to link them together with a spine now i tend to i i go i go straight in there with the skin and link them in the videos and and i i talk about this shape i talk about having the pelvis hair the thorax hair and linking this section with this section to create this um you know very very muscular it's almost like introducing the muscle along with the spine and then when that pelvis is down and and rotated to this side and the thorax is up and rotated to this side i talk in the videos about how that'll curl around the back there now uh, if some of you this 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 is where i start to introduce drawing skill into the things and i know some of your drawing skill uh though your animations you're really picking up the animation your drawing and hand-eye coordination will find this problematic so while this is a very powerful way of doing things in hindsight looking at some of you guys as some of you guys it can sometimes cause a little bit of confusion so if you want you can draw you can try to link them together with a spine my the reason i teach it this way is it is an intermediate lecture and we i'm trying to build your understanding of the muscle torque which is why we're doing things like that the same thing we got Amberly in the chat, uh, Frilled Mayfly. Same issues going on with her one, uh, which I will cover there. But all in all, it's a good first attempt. Uh, what What's good about it, Cameron, is we can really see the um, the anatomy of you know you've understood the anatomy of the pelvis. You can really see the joints. You can see the knee joint working. You can see the you know the feet the uh, toes you can really see the calcaneus in action here you can see the um the scapula working nicely pushing the weight straightening the arms so it's a successful exercise scamron just the skinning of the dog skinning of the dog uh, and the proportions of the head do make it uh slightly you know 
the head one little less so that's just again that's the due to the drawing due to you i know you're working on your drawing at the moment so that's just due to that you hopefully that hopefully as you move through these uh exercises into the trot which is a lot easier than the the walk you know we start with the walk but the walk is the in my opinion the hardest one uh because the gallops are a lot quicker uh, the up and down is a lot more dynamic. It's easier to do those bigger movements. Uh, so hopefully as you move on from this, you've kind of built the necessary brain cells and everything will start falling into place proportion wise and skinning wise on the next ones. But a great test there, Cameron. Batch tunes, we have his front walk cycle on twos. This is the basics archive exercise from the training library I like. So this is this is an intermediate archive exercise. This is the basic archive exercise. That's why I'm saying that to anybody in the chat who is not a library. I like how the lecture shows how we add variation in the arm swings on each contact pose. I feel like I learned a lot. The body moves nicely, but I think I may have over exaggerated uh the head if there are any changes this was on the 17th of march i think i might have seen it but i'll have a look at it again i think i may have seen this um it's good it's good the the head is a little stiff um but it's good is this on ones i don't think it is yeah, it's on it's on twos. So we're losing some of that. You know, there's something. What's your frame rate? You know, I know it's on twos, but are you you know about animation, you know your stuff. So this should be on 24 FPS. It feels a little punchy, it feels a little quick. Or it could just be a long time since I've seen this exercise. It is a basic exercise, so I might be expecting too much. Right, so the um, the figure of eight is in the head. The figure of eight is in the hip. The figure of eight is in the upper torso. Um, it does feel a little quick in the arms. There is something about this. Uh, check your frame rate on your output of your software. Um, it does feel a little quick. Uh, but other than that, patch tunes, yeah, it's it looks good. Um, looks good to me. Uh, this, I mean, as I said, anybody is welcome to join this group. Um, and I sometimes talk about non-library member posts, but I can't really, you know, this kind of post, I can't really contribute any, any possible po feedback at all other than please look at the free basic, uh, lectures in this group um this is not you know that's with all due respect this this is an animation i mean this is just it's just playing so uh, some of you might think i'm being rough but this group is called real animator growth development and progress it's a space for what i you know my brand real animator which is people who are working to bring quality uh you know express the craft of hand-drawn animation to its highest level whether you're studying from my library or not i will respect any expression of that simple you know fa fanimation and when i say fanimation i'm not talking about female genitalia i'm talking about fan art fan stuff um of you know characters even i, I would even respect to talk about that if it was showing that there was an attempt to really do something with it but i can't really this is just you know almost like i don't know how old you are the funny thing is is i've got to be careful because sometimes youngsters join the group and i don't want to kill their spirit but this is kind of like this is better than university because i have cal art students graduates who have joined my training library i have disney employees who've joined my training library so the thing is is i can't you know, I'm sorry if you're young, but I, I talk generally to adults. Uh, but uh, shockingly, a lot of adults produce content like this in this day and age. So uh, that we, we need real animator training more than ever now. Um, 
so uh so that's what i have to say about that you're more than welcome to keep posting in the group but as long as you don't spam the wall with this stuff um that's that we got some more people in the chat um so let me just very quickly say as more people, people are, are gathering, gathering in, in the, the chat, chat. Okay. okay we have jumped in to just start looking at the community posts i see that dylan i'll destroy you all is in the chat and we have got giant poop wow what a name <laughs> my kind of name actually uh, hope uh luxley we've got some people coming into the chat uh so if you want to suggest your character breakdowns at the end of all this, I will do the breakdown rather than at the start because we don't want to waste time. So I'm just getting through these posts. So suggest your character breakdowns um, and we may do the drawing at the end, but I'm just going to keep the stream going rather than wait around. Um. Okay, so here we have got Diana Cortez. Uh, the 16 laws of animation um so this is the conclusion lecture in the basics archive so after all those cycles and head turns it seems like a kind of anticlimax to do such a simple thing but actually this is the consolidatory exercise where she's focused on timing slowing in slowing out arcing pose to pose and straight ahead follow through uh, an overlapping action so those are five of the six laws of movement you could have put squash and stretch in there as well or solid drawing because you've had to keep it solid and that would be the six laws of movement that you learn uh, which is what she's written here in the basics archive now diana cortez she breathes solid drawing she's so naturally good at it anyway so maybe that's why she forgot to <laughs> to write it down there okay so this is diana cortez's um good stuff uh, i like it i like the i like these the vibration in the spring there of the pendulum it's slightly different to mine mine gives a more of an s curve and it's a little more weighted but you know what i don't care you completed the basics archive um you you have given it your own feel and it's got this nice weight and springiness to that um which creates this nice strobe effect which is quite realistic actually so i quite like that i like that tugging effect on the string and the tail looks good too going on either side very very nice very very nice so don't again as usual with diana's stuff um pretty pretty much all in there i like this account reminding people about this book so if you are in the chat uh go and buy this book uh it is the only book that i recommend for people wanting to learn about real animation not the animator survival kit why would you why would you waste your money on that book when you have the real animator training library so the illusion of life is the only book that i would uh really recommend um as a subsidiary uh, thing because it is written by the true uh, masters of animation um ollie johnson and frank thomas two of the nine old men um okay i remember this uh by grigory we're not going to talk about that i made myself clear in that post um diana cortez is now she's on her front run so this is an exercise before um the uh wow that's a really nice front run diana i see you are um, let me see if the video quality is unnecessarily low here i don't know why it does that let's just put it to 720 that's good enough wow diana that is very very nice a little bit too much of a turn in the head there just making that's to do with the posing just making it a little bit unnatural see on this side we've got a nice enough like a nice natural angle on the head here and on this side he turns his head just a little too much making it feel taking away some of that uh but but man i love that hippity hoppity skippity skippity feel um this is really really nice i like the way you drew the the knees in there and uh turned the stick man i don't have anything other than that head head turning a little bit too much i don't have um that's right travis yeah uh, 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 i've got to do it because, because he's you know, you know he's he's, one, he's probably, probably the most, most along with uh, 
Live Fantasy. He's probably the most seasoned real animator training library member uh, out there flexing his muscles. So I've got to make note of him. Ugh, Travis, the insert animate. He's online. Yes, and that book, my friend, is the same book that you animated. That's that's what we like to think of it. Okay, back back to the stream. So Diana, what can I say? All I can say is, is you turn. I feel you turned the head a little bit too much here, but other than that, a, a stellar exercise, pretty flawlessly executed. One of the, you know, another, another almost ten out of ten for you on that. Fantastic, um, lovely stuff. So Diana has now moved into the intermediate archive. I remember. I'm, I mean, I remember her doing the flower sack turnaround which was the first exercise of the Intermediate Archive, which is, by the way, one of the... Um, I'm, I'm quite pissed off about this. I'm going to try it again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete all of my... Um, I don't know why this isn't working. I'm going to make sure I copy all of this properly, right? Right-click, copy. I'm going to click on that. I don't know why this showcase paste that in there submit that I don't know why that's not working but in the free lectures you've got some of the you got the first flower sack lecture in here somebody get your cat if you can go in there and see if that you can access that for me and let me know in the chat um, if that's working if you can access I don't know why that's happening that's very bad actually but anyway I've given you the first free lecture on this flower sack to, you know so you don't even have to be a library member you should be able to access that but we seem to have some problems some uh, teething problems there probably from Vimeo's end which is a, another reason why I was so happy the library grown so I was able to move it from Vimeo onto the AMB animation space as a full-on proper business right so here's her jumping action um, so, wow, yeah, again, Diana, you, you really have been listening to the lectures. This, I mean, this, this almost feels just like my exercise. Um, you know, if, if I'm going to pause it and really look for problems, then, you know, the, the things I point out aren't really worth talking about, right? So the squash and stretch is really nice because you see that what, what I always tell people is you want it to change shape and form but feel like the same piece of mass so it's definitely got a lot smaller hair but the mash is distributed so nicely that it feels like it's being distributed elsewhere and again we're jumping up here gets really thin that's good because we don't want it to grow too much in size it does feel a little big here but then let's look at that in comparison to your first frame no, I can see that. Wow, you've done really well. Really well, I have to say. And it comes down. I love your... Well, you're just using my shapes, which are essentially Bluth shapes. So I love your Bluth shapes. Uh, so this, again, I love this. Yeah, we got the distribution of mass. That's real squash and stretch right there. The way it drops into the butt there. Boink, coming back up. Yeah, um, don't really have... It doesn't work for you either, Kitchikat. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. That's a headache that I will have to solve. Let me very quickly just see. Uh, let me go on to the training library. Okay. Hopefully the training library hasn't been affected by this. Let me go into my member dashboard. Let me go into my account. Sorry. Just check-ins. Let's go into this archive. How to animate your own film. Okay, let's see if this plays. Uh, yes, this is playing. Let's go into episodes 21 to 30. There are 56 of these episodes. Let's see if episode 21 plays. Yeah, episode 21. Every concern is would be life. playing. There we go. Yeah, right. so the, the training well, library, it. thankfully, is if not there's no life in it, by it whatever work this uh, This problem is that's happening with the um free stuff so don't worry i'll get the free stuff working for you when i come offline um so that is great diana cortez again another 
you know, you're really bossing your way uh, through the intermediate archive. Here we've got Michael Kilner Davis. He's doing the same exercise. Here's my attempt at the jumping flower sack. Original post. My thought. Oh, I thought my arcs on the forearm were off coming down to standing up. So I tried to sort it here. Probably it's just me staring at the screen too long. Yes, that happens. Anyway, two versions. I think I prefer the first one now. Yeah, that of, often happens. So let's look at the first one. Looking good, looking good. I personally don't see anything wrong with the arms. It looks pretty much like the same thing that Diana did. Meaning that you've been... She did get she did slightly get a better understanding of the blue shapes. Um, I know that I'm just pointing that out to you, Michael, because I know that you're a proud draftsman and I love your your pen drawings of those birds. So I'm just pointing that out to you so you don't feel that I'm just saying all good stuff. I know you want to hear some things. So the drawing could be a little nicer. Your shapes, if you want to get that Disney blue style of shapes you know we've all got our own drawing also the morphing of this line of this leg here into this feels a little out of whack i'm just gonna go back see look at the way that leg deforms i'm gonna go back and look at diana's there on that see there's a little it's a little fidgety there that shape um there when we talk about the leg but that's the only thing squash and stretch wise everything else seems pretty spot on to me let's see your other attempt um yeah hardly any difference for me michael what i'm looking more at here is this leg line uh feels a bit fidgety right feels a bit fidgety as we're going in and out of it some of you'll remember it's funny because when i was doing the tailspin animation let me bring that on, you know, in case I showed it to some of you guys earlier on. That This is what I did when I was feeling a little bit sick. I colored it all in. I cleaned it all up. I in-betweened it. So we can see that there. But it's funny that as I was animating Baloo the Bear, and I, I think I talked about this when I was in the live stream, uh, because this was all animated live. You know, you guys in the audience challenged me to animate uh two uh, tailspin characters dancing so i did it live you know hopefully i can get you to this level i've got travis uh and live fantasy they've they're reaching similar levels which i'm very proud of but i was talking about baloo the bear so we look at this flower sack like this right and people often People who don't understand the power of my teaching system, okay, all the, all the little Richard little Richard Williams fanboys or whoever, like, they don't know the power of what I'm doing. They they try to criticize. Oh well, that's not a flower sack. That's that looks like a chicken leg, you know. Um, but you know, go be happy doing your flower sack and then doing shit work because you know. I don't care. You can spend all your time and energy putting all your little seams in there and, and saying you're, you're drawing your sack and animating that. But then if you can't draw people, you're fucked. You know, you've wasted a whole load of time. The whole power thing about this, right, is I draw this flower sack. What is this flower sack? This flower sack that I've created for you all to learn here. This is Baloo the Bear, right? This is a full-on Disney character right look for the bare necessities the simple bare necessities forget about your worries and your strife okay you just learn from real animator training right forget about your worries and your strife and you got basically baloo the bear minus the head right you got baloo the bear minus the head right that's essentially what you're learning how to do when you're learning the intermediate archive of the Real Animator Training Library. The flower sack in Real Animator Training is not for beginners, okay? You start with bouncing balls. You start with swinging pendulums. You can even do a matchstick man, right? An awkward matchstick man made of little parts, fiddly little parts that, you know, you're going to get all awkward. You then start learning about this thing called appeal, and squash and stretch with this flower sack okay 
which looks very much like this, which is priming you to move on to the good stuff, to priming you to draw anything better. So just a little thing to the people who like to come in and needle and say that's a dead chicken or whatever. All right, it's a dead chicken, but at the end of the day, the people learning it, they're good and you're fucking shit. All right, so simple as that. Go, go draw your flower sack and be proud of that. Go draw your ball sack. Leave the real stuff, the, the, you know, the, you, the, the AMB flower sack to the people who are learning the real way, the right way, the only way. Simple as. So this is, um, so that's pretty good, Michael. The issue that I would say, again, before I got sidetracked, talking about some of the f ignorant comments I receive from people who've never animated in the industry in their life, but have just read a lot of shit, is you want to, you know, that, that little leg, right, of the flower sack, you want to get that right because that's how characters like Baloo or Mice or those kind of things, that's how they walk, right? That's how that works. So the, for me, the thing that you need to um, basically focus on isn't really, you know, what you were looking at I don't see that, but what I do see is is this awkwardness in the deformations of the leg. I'm going to go back and look at Diana's to see what she did. Um, yeah, hers is a little nicer. Can you see? There's a little, you know, again, there's a little, I mean, again, looking maybe from my video I've, as I'm explaining how to draw it, I am exaggerating it a little bit but you can see hers is a there's a little bit of a, a strange deformation here as she's trying to get the belly right right but <clears throat> then as it goes in and out of it it's about knowing where to draw it and where to leave it so she comes in and out of it a little bit nicer there right see in and out of it a little bit more natural a little bit more nicer there so that's something for you to think about, Michael. Um, Amberly Ferrell, I'm not going to say much about this particular post. Um, Amberly is a Real Animated Training Library member. She's also a member of Bluth University. Um, so she says, uh, we're not allowed to post anything due to concerns. I would never copy Bluth's thing uh, because, you know, if anything, Bluth's course should be copying mine because I get better results. Boom, boom, boom. But the thing is, as I understand that, we're not allowed to copy uh, Bluth's university uh, due to concerns of some online school stealing their curriculum. Ah, I wouldn't do things his way. No, he's a great animator, but I wouldn't do things teaching-wise his way. We're allowed to have a stuff as a portfolio at the end of the year. The only reason I'm saying that is because I see, you know, I've, I've got people from his course on my course and they don't even know, they can't even do some of the absolute basic archive stuff from Real Animator Training. So I'm not taking stabs. You all know I love Bluth, but there's got to be a problem if people can't animate the Stickman cycle properly. You know, um, what are they doing? You know, so... Um, we're allowed to have stuff as a portfolio at the end of the year. Anyways, I've been learning a lot and my character design has improved substantially. Here's a redesign of one of my characters. I'm super happy with how she's turned out. This is uh, looking really nice, Amberly. I have to say, I'm not going to talk too much about it. But one thing I will say, um, let me move this on the other screen here. Something to give you just a little, I like your simple shapes. But something, what I, I love it without the clothes is, is awesome. So you've got this character, all right? I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to, I'm just going to go to your silhouette. What I love about this is the silhouette. I would personally weight the ground a little bit more, right? But anyway, so this comes around here like this, right? Like there and the tail. Again, the tail is, this is it's a lovely character, I have to say. When I saw you posting these on Twitter, I just thought, wow, what a beautiful. And it's, it's what I like is, is it's your style, you know, it's, it's the way you draw. Um, so you've got the ears here like this. Now, I'm not going to draw too much of, I'm not going to focus on the actual face, right, or anything like that. So I'm just going to very quickly put the eye in there. So 
I'm not here dealing, to, I'm not going to tell you anything about that, right? Because I think that's all cool. I love the whiskers, by the way. I love the shapes and the whiskers. That, that is so nice, right? So what I will tell you, a little bit of thing here is, is, yes, you can use simple shapes like this. But you see the way you've got the, the this turning up here, this would suggest it's coming around there, right? So you want to think about the angles um, of the garment. So you see the way this is curling around up here like this. The, that shape is slightly out. Let me use a different color. You see, if, if you're going to do something like that, Amberly, that's gonna want we're gonna want to see that right so you've got this going down here on this side here like this right you're then gonna want to see that on the other side so which isn't gonna work right so little things like that right you're gonna want to have to change the direction so this is a this is a full-on uh profile view now another thing that i would I would do is, is I would play with the anatomy of the see because she's got these shoulders like this so I would br I would bring the shape more I would I would cut more straight in to create a more and then you could curve this one as you have so you balance the curve against the straight here so it just creates more of an interesting shape right so I just don't know if you can see that I'll bring that in I wonder if you're still online Amberly uh, so can you see like first you got that bit off there going off in the other direction then you've got this which is which is nice but it's a little bit flat in relation to the sleeves coming here so i would just i would use that nice round swooping shape on the top one but on the bottom one i would have i would have that like that to come around where the scapula is then also um again here is I would you're curling this around here like this right I would then maybe just think about bringing this out a little bit right which you have done but I would bring it out a little bit more just to create a nice break in the silhouette here in the negative space so this is coming there and then you want to think about the contours of the body this is good this is good but like this is almost cut out style you see it's almost like when when we look at it without the clothes it's great right well i would say that i'm an old perv but the thing is is when, when we when when we put clothes on it right you want to think about the contouring of the body at the moment you're just kind of just using these safe straight lines so again you want to think about almost it you don't want to curl it up too much because that's not what you're trying to do i understand that but you want to think about well okay the legs are coming here like this so this is going to curl this way then you want to think about this is going to be this way right so this is going to be here but then you're going to unify it and then you're going to almost like this is coming around here you're going to dink it around right just to that to just give it a little bit more um difference variation to the to what it is that's actually on on the character so it, we feel we feel this is coming out we feel this is going around and we feel this is coming out like that it literally is almost like mesh i know you've been sculpting a lot a little bit so it's almost like a mesh a mesh kind of thing again i like the sleeves i love the sleeves but we just want to push it a little bit you you've almost got this walnut like effect so these little tips i'm giving you are going to help you so what you want to think of is is you want to think of a nice master shape right so the master shape let's just say it's going to be hanging like this right because everything's coming down right so the master shape is going to be hanging like this and the sleeve is very very thin which i love by the way what you've got there is that thin sleeve to show that i'm going to color that in to so we can see that so now we've got this master shape we want to think about varying it at the moment you're kind of using these even even shapes making it look like a pumpkin or something like that right i just want to bring that in so we want to play with texture here right because at the moment you, you you've got this hard uh pumpkin vegetable like texture on this thing we want to make it feel like cloth 
right? So what we want to do is you can think about the seam and you can think about actually bringing a little bit of the seam at the back here like this so we can feel some kind of attachment to that. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I'm giving you variations. Now you want to play with the size. So uh, out coming from here, you may want to bring this in to give it that rounded feel. Now from here, you're going to come out and then um, you're going to pick a point up here, maybe from the middle, right? I'm going to pick this point and I'm going to very gently start to pick now from the outer point. So notice this is this way and this is this way, right? Like this. So at the moment, yours are all going in the same direction. Um, where is it? There it is. So man I'm struggling to find the thing so yours are all going in the same direction can you see so i want to play with that i want to make this go like if the arm is bent here i'm gonna play with that direction there like that right then i'm gonna bring this out a little bit you know bring this in we can use the same kind of if it's a stiffer garment we can use that here and I might use I might if you want to have an even style I might just put one in the middle but not all have them coming to the top right so maybe this one maybe this one and this one will go high like this right and then maybe you can put a line at the back of that like that right and a line out there like that to create some and then bring that line in to create some variation of this um i actually wouldn't put any up here i may put a little fold up here like this right there like that so that creates some variation on the garment that's a little even now so what i might do is take that one away see it's a it's a it's a it's a lot of see now these two lines look a little even you see so there's a lot of play that you want to do to get this right but you want to have the feel so if we were shading this right you want to have the feel that this is like the garment is on there like that so there's some texture to it right um again the sleeve i would you you've been very small with the sleeve uh which is fine but i would then i would then play a little bit with the size and the feel of that to give it a little bit it's a little bit flat it's a little bit regular at the moment right on this side same with this uh collar section with the collar section i would think about that what that collar is so first you got this bit coming around here which i love by the way and you've got this um button or diamond or whatever on there you know and then you want to think about this thing coming under her so again you're going to want to think about the angle of the shape so i'm going to make the shape like this and then here i'm going to create these things in accordance to that shape right so it gives it some volume right maybe i bring this one down a bit like that makes it a little bit more interesting right so this comes out this comes down then we can do all on the uh, the rubbers just too fat we can do one on the other side coming around here like this i'll just shade those in so we can see they're on the other side right it's a little extreme it's a little too far out so maybe i will cut it off there but you want to play you know you want to maybe bring this one out bring this one in you want to play with that so therefore you get more textures again that could be coming higher up here like this right to get that rounded feel so this kind of complements her face here well as you can do it this way but i feel this this kind of fights against her chin line so you got this nice jaw line here and you want to complement that jaw line so it's best to go kind of along it with this thing right so that's way then oh, finally you've got the dress which is nice again 
it's a little it's a little even so I would then create the the shape coming out here just to give the tail a little bit of thing then you got this is coming along here generally what you've done is fine with this one you would come around and around and around like this right so we've got this yeah I, w I would just not have everything even right so I would play because when these things are like they kind of squash and stretch themselves right so I would just play with the, sh the, 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 the size of them at the moment everything's very very uniform you know almost the same width and the same deformation so just those things um, are things that I would uh, personally uh, think about to make your garments on your character feel a little bit more um, dimensional because it's such a great character that you don't want to you don't want to flatten it with the clothing the clothing you it's an opportunity to to bring out the dimension a little bit more um, bum, bum, bum. we've got Cameron and we've got Charlene we got some of the regulars are there um, I've got no need to do a My Little Pony tutorial unless there's enough re requests for it, Blizzard. This I'm not really a fan fanimation channel. I'm a master animator sharing my skills. It's a some sometimes like if somebody wants me to draw um, Tarzan or something or these characters, it's or even Cowboy Bebop. It's a, enabling me to show my mastery of my skills. The My Little Pony of today is is what I consider to be extremely low level animation so it would you know it, yes if it me if it makes me sound a bit snobbish it would be a little beneath me to be doing that because i'm trying to bring people's levels up uh if i was going to do my little pony i'd probably draw more like the ATS TV version because that actually took skill to draw but i know a lot of people are into this new kind of digital puppet look but uh thanks for suggesting it i don't mean i'm trying not to be rude i'm trying to just be honest uh, as to why I'm here, I'm here to raise people's standards to what I call real animation, not simple digital puppetry. I mean, uh, so that's why I do that. I looked a lot at the Victorian clothes and dresses. They were fairly stiff, but I think I'll think about... Uh, yes, they're stiff, I know, but from those old paintings. But still, for example, you got those, the, those things where you've got those things around King Henry the eighth right but even there it would be variation you know one would be thinner and then you'd get two thin ones here and a thick one here so even even in that circumstance if he's here with his hands on his his hips like this you can't change the like for example this thing coming here is going to be a big stiff thing like this but still it's gonna cause the it's gonna cause the deformations to be a little bit different in shape around here right so that's what essentially I'm trying to get uh, you to think about is is even if it's stiff you know another way of, of getting the stiffness is then to use harsher like more milk cow style shapes instead of rounds right so you want to balance it so the same theory that i'm taught explaining to you would be but now i'm using harsher triangle shapes right and that's giving it that stiff feel right but the theory of everything that i told you still sits intact you're still gonna want to break the silhouette so even if i'm gonna make this curve here and bring this out here it's a stiffer garment right so it's the same thing if you're doing um, a girl running right you can have you can have it in stiff right 
even if it's stiff flared trousers right so we're using stiff harsher lines but <clears throat> on this side I'm gonna use more rounds right and just by using the rounds and by putting lines here it loosens it up so again if you want to stiffen things you, you're gonna have to play with the harsh curves against straights as well but all the same theory here is intact Amberly right so this this can then turn into a thick flared trouser right a stiff flared trouser by just but again I'm using those angles there so again the line line is our line is our power line is our weapon as real animators all right what do we do we use the secret science okay what's the secret science those of you in the training library will know the secret science of shape simplification simplification that is our weapon of choice as real animators but what are these shapes made up of okay they're made up of lines and when we draw that's what we're doing as real animators we're drawing because you know drawing is an actual real skill that makes it unique to you to no one else you're not fiddling about with someone else's puppet you're not pulling and playing till it feels good just like a good little puppeteer you're a real animator you're drawing okay so by drawing we've got to remember that line is king right line gives us texture line gives us weight right line gives us volume line gives us mass line gives us everything all right line get, makes things loose it makes things solid so are we using what kind of flowing lines we using are we using more rigid lines you see so again due to garment that's the secret okay that's the that's one of the secrets of line all right now let us now move on <coughs> so maybe when i was giving you those examples i forgot to explain to you about um which is why when i was going around the neck I was suddenly creating more harsher uh, shapes so you need to think about if if you want to create a certain texture and it'll work because if your character is rounded like if your character is a soft rounded mouse kind of thing right if it's it's soft with all these curly whiskers like that and then maybe it'll play nicely to have this thing let's put it in a Henry the eighth whatever kind of that'll play nice to get this more stiff contrast um, and then you got the round feet or whatever coming and the soft round tail so again contrast contrast is our friend okay contrast is what keeps things different but interesting right same with color light tone line everything contrast black and white all right so that's Amberly's drawing Octavio's we've had a look at this I remember covering this um, I remember looking at his video and talking about this so that's all good um, and his map of all this so I remember seeing this Pedro, my best effort to get the dog. The only thing that will make me go back again is teacher. You don't know. You don't go back. You just keep going forwards. All right. You, you know, you can't. If you get it wrong, you get it wrong. That's all right. Not bad. Again, though, Pedro, what's... See, it's very fluid and the arcs are nice. But what your, your main problem is the harmony between the front and the back. Right? It's like he's... You're, you're squashing and stretching his body but it's like he's forever squashed it's like i'm saying to him i have all power over you like i'm almost making a a, a, a hand magician hand here like right so it feels like i'm here like saying 
Ha 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 ha. Let's put the little pinky out there. You can only run, and the little poor doggy is trying to run just between my two hands, and he's squashed in like that, right? That's what it feels like. Everything feels that we're not really having the opening, right, of that gallop to the closing, all right, of it, right? So we don't really have, we're not seeing the opening and the closing. We're seeing everything is compressed, right? Everything is, even the way these elongated, the way you've drawn it is elongated. So that's also keeping that illusion. So while while you followed the, the tutorial, and yes, you've got the mechanics right, you've got the arcs right, you've got everything pretty much in theory is correct with the exception of the squash and stretch of the midsection. We're not seeing at all, what is this? this? This looks to me like the single suspension gallop, not the canter. Let me see. The best way is to look at how many beats on the ground. So we've got one, two, three, four. Yeah, this is the single suspension gallop. It's a four beat cycle. So we're not really, you see this, with hair between him we're not really seeing see where he should be squashing right it's stretching although you've got that that squashed feel in the spine what's actually happening is is you're stretching the spine out right you're stretching it out so we're getting a we're getting a stretch squash okay it should be when he's out like this it should be stretched right when his feet are coming onto the ground like this right it should be stretched right and then when it when when they're coming together right like this that's where the back comes into play and the we get the squashed effect right so but you're almost taking this out and giving him putting his butt up here you know right you're almost sticking it out and putting his butt up there and we're getting a squash stretch feel which is awkward all right so again it's like what i was saying to camera now the thing is as i've seen some of your private furry drawings pedro it's not like you're, you're not a particularly bad draftsman so i i don't understand maybe you're just as you're really trying you're not you're not able to link the front and the back together and you've been very loose with the skinning here all right so it's important the next time you go on to linking front and back together, it's important, like I was telling Cameron Black, and I'll use this example again, right? So we've got the, the dog turning, right? It's important that you think about how the back and the front, right, link, right? So this is the power to drawing strong quadruped poses as well, right? Because you want to draw these animals in motion even when you're not really doing the cycles. So this is again why I teach it this way. So rather than having you like, again, the whole thing of just putting a spine line between the two, it doesn't really help you. Yes, this is harder in a way because it makes you brain, use your brain a bit more, but it doesn't really help you grasp, you know. So if he's here like this, now we know from the walk position that this, this leg is gonna be coming up now right so up here like this so then this leg could be turned more in here like this right in line with this one and this one so the tail is out here right so this then he could be turning his head here right i just let's just make up the character let's make him a, like one of those um fox and the hound kind of things right so he could be turning his head here but you see instant all because of this relationship between the front and the back right we're able to get interesting poses out of it so the whole reason of you learning to do the dog uh, in with this weird mechanical creature that you're learning in the intermediate archive which is not the most appealing looking design i you know but it's designed like this for a reason you know it's almost like a 
Ed 209, you have 20 seconds to comply for those of you who are old enough to know what I'm talking about, right? So it's not the most appealing design and it's quite challenging to get it looking to get it looking good and get it looking right, but that's why I've done it this way, right? So you can understand the differences between, you know, the the whole squashing and stretching of the the leg this actually should be more lifted like this on this side and this one should be more like that but anyway so you see even even when i'm playing because i've got the cycle theory drummed into me you're always going to get the legs right you know um in theory you can play around there's no right or wrong with the legs the more advanced you get as life fantasy will tell you but you can you can always kind of check yourself theory wise so you get those poses right so that's the issue there pedro it it, it feels like oh that's kind of i uh, wish you would loop it for longer than that it feels like oh that's kind of fluid and nice but then there's this weird hump in the back because it's squashing and not squashing and not stretching okay that midsection is not squashing and stretching and you're just growing the back so um gives it this awkward feel right but uh, still a much better attempt than the last one so you are um you are getting somewhere in in this all so don't worry too much cameron black has in between his uh his dog so um the, everything i say still stands but here you can see this whole thing has to be done on ones so you've kept the it's, it's nice and solid you know so a really good way of the tail is a little strange uh grows and it whips around a little bit uh we don't quite get the flow in the tail but aside from that um it's mainly the proportions of the head and the ones has softened out the issue with the spine um cameron and that's what ones does so ones makes everything feel like silky smooth so many people like like to put more in betweens to save uh, i'm not saying this is bad animation this is you learning cameron but for example you know a lot of people put things on ones sometimes you know i've experienced it myself of just throwing another in between throwing another in between but if it's too late to fix something just you know it's like throwing noise in in audio to try and uh, you know soften things out but you know um so you've softened out the 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 spine there with the ones which kind of help it a little bit but in the next one think a little bit more about the skinning of the dog with the proportion of the head but everything else is solid and looking good cameron looking good gerbis is kind of jumping ahead she's uh hasn't finished the basics archive um uh at the moment but she's saying here now i haven't finished the head turn yet but i slipped in to go at the turnaround here because she i think she's doing a job this is because i have a great opportunity to work with some other students as a little animation projects where i have a chance to test out my skills i'm still at beginner's level i feel like there are so many exercises i should do beforehand yeah but you know what you you've got yourself an opportunity so there's you know uh, this is not really deviating from your training this is something that you're doing that, that this is why you're training yourself gerbis it's like as long as you stick to the training and go back to it this is all fine um i should do but, but i think later on in my studies learning simply doing at least with some basic knowledge at hand i would love uh to share some animation stuff from but it's but from time to time as i value your experience yes please do there's a lot of feedback in this group it's probably the best i can get for this i would like to start with the turnaround of my animated bunny um so she's been following my turnaround lecture but this is her attempt so she's followed some of the stuff that i've taught in the advanced archive even though she's in the beginning beginner's archive and i never say i never want people to go from be beginners to advanced but i guess gerbis has been around for a while and she's she's not that's why she's wrote that long message 
she's not deviating she's gonna go back she just wants a little insight from that stuff so this is good this is great you've really captured i i really like what you've done here it's very consistent it's uh i think uh you you know i'm i'm quite impressed by your draftsmanship on the um, we do kind of lose the the form of it a little bit it, it feels a little bit you know on the front and rear um one thing that helps you one thing that would help you is um is you want to think you you've used the box method now again this is why i this is why i say you shouldn't do advanced exercises as a beginner but it's all right you know uh, i'm not saying look you you've done a pretty good test here and i'm just trying to give i'm just giving you pointers of why that box method perhaps isn't going to be the best um so you've got the the bunny rabbit here right now I know a thing or two about these guys because I've been studying them to design Mr. Hopper, right? So you have the you have this section here, right? So the box is a good idea, but again, when you learn the intermediate archive, the dog, right? You learn about the pelvis, right? You learn about the midsection and the torso. Now he's got a cute little belly down here, right? And you also learn about the scapula, right? And this thing, right? Which could could be clumped into a shape here like this, right? Could be clumped into a shape where the head is going to go. I'm not really going to talk so much about the head uh, because it's it's more the body. So when we're going from, you see the secret science of shape simplification, uh, Kervis. When we're going from that to front view, you want to think about that shape now, right? So that shape's going to be like this, right here, with the middle section, right? With the paws in the middle here like this, right? With this here. So then the, the out, outside, the pelvis area is going to come around here, right? So we've got the back of the pelvis here like this, with the feet here like that. So that's how you're gonna keep the you're gonna keep the form without without it feeling as fat. Can you see those shapes moving and rotating in there like that? So the looking at the box thing was a good idea, but again, it's not your fault because you haven't been through the whole methodology of the training library. Um, you did a really good job, though. You did a really good job, especially for somebody who hasn't been through that methodology but you can see where you're trying to like fill in this massive box by using your just your sheer draftsmanship skills uh, and eyeballing it and you see here you're coming out of the box on the on the spine here right which is which isn't which isn't going to help when you want to when which is why it's kind of like losing and gaining on on, on sides here so the box is a good way it's a good idea but then you see here you're not really you're trying to have these shapes but as you're more illustrative here so you're not thinking in terms of the again had you been through the um the intermediate archive you would understand now the bunny rabbit is going to be more like this right you would you would it's probably going to be further down here like that or maybe up here like this you know but because i'm trying to stick with my drawing you would understand that the pelvis is actually down here right so that's actually you know i've kind of given you this cartoon cheat here you know in reality the pelvis would be down here with the knees up here the legs down here and the, and the leg out here like that right and then the the spine would be curling here with the rib cage here with the scapula here like this right so in more um probably more like that so you would understand that and then so you would be then applying that spine shape here like this and focusing 
You can use the simple shape what I used here to make it easier. Sometimes too much anatomy interferes when you're doing something like this. Uh, I preach anatomy, anatomy, anatomy all the time, but again, the, sh the law of shape simplification is, is, um, is, is a lot more to it. But on the whole, Kerbis is a nice turnaround. It works pretty much. Um, as I've said many times, these kind of turnarounds aren't designed for model sheets. They're just designed to help you understand how to turn the character around. For example, I don't know if it's here, but like you've got my ground hopper turnaround, right? I did this to help myself. Um, is he in ground hopper development? Yeah, I did this. This hasn't even been really touted. It's, you know, it's very solid. It's very amazing. There's a little issue with the feet here, but like I did this for myself. All right. I did this for myself so I can understand how to animate him. I wouldn't put him, I wouldn't really, I've got this mock-up sheet because it makes a nice Instagram post. Where is it? But that's all it's for. Like these first generation uh, groundhoppers, they're not really, you know, so I wouldn't really have that as the model sheet. You know, it's there. It's almost like having a maquette of the character, but it's there. So these first generation groundhopper pictures of me, completely kind of like happy with his redesign but to be honest if the model sheet is going to happen it's going to be after playing with him for long enough so now now it, he gets a lot simpler now i can draw him without all that stupidity all that structure and construction and i can just go in there and start to actually get personality in the character right so it's 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 pretty much the same thing but it's just better because it's it's more it's more almost like an illustration but in the illustration is packed all of that structural information that I had to get so my brain cells would be able to to draw this character in a more freer like more more of a flowing animator's way right to get flowing good animation out of him right so if i was going to do a model sheet of him the model sheet would be with more interesting poses like maybe his maybe he'd be standing on something with his arms folded right on the three quarter maybe on the rear view his arms will be out right and he'd be standing like this it, that would be my turnaround my turnaround wouldn't just be turning around this one pose because that that really you know a lot of tv shows have that and that's why they're tv shows but when you get more advanced you want your model sheets to be a little bit more expressive with a full model back explaining why things are but that's pretty good that's a that that's a nice enough uh turnaround selena nina finished a new bouncing ball test um i tried to incorporate the feedback i got on the last one so i remember that i told you about putting more effort and life into it yeah already this is good I like the way that you're putting personality into him with those little looks. Timing is much better. I like this end little bit where he gets happy. See, this is this is much better, Selena. Much better than before. You've got um, you've got a lot more personality, and there's a lot more timing in this thing now. One of the things I will say that you need to watch out for is is when you're squashing and stretching, you're losing a little bit of mass. All right, so 
if he's going to squash, even if he's going to really, really squash to thin, maybe maybe play with some of that mass out the sides or, or have him go wider, right? So if you don't want that, have him go even wider if you want him going super, super thin, right? Have him going even wider, maybe with a little bit of a little bit of bulk hair like this. If you want him to really, we want this to feel like this. We want this to feel like this. So at times it feels like you're you're not really when he's getting into those shapes. It's almost like just morphing rather than squashing and stretching. So at times it feels like that. Also, some of the transitions from shape to shape so the first one here they don't don't quite work as well as they could so here I, I like this so he's rolling around he looks off the edge so he comes back here anticipation very good anticipation so here now when he squashes down he doesn't he, he, it feels more like where you haven't made him go wide right it feels like You've kind of chopped out the middle and you've squashed him like this, right? So remember, we want to we wanna go wide. We want to push that mass out to the sides, right? So there's that. Boom, 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 boom. And then, so here, yeah, you now you're kind of doing that, but it transitions it's almost like we've lost a lot of mass but now we're gaining some mass on the sides here now as we come up here he's got a stretch out of this selena it feels weird that he's he's like he's in this pose like this kind of goes against the law all right so if he kind of flips up he's gonna have to stretch out the other way you if you want him to flip up that way you can you can have it reverse, right? But then you're going to still want it to bulge a little bit, right? So then it's going to come out like this, right? So you can have it like, but then it's going to have to, you know, it'll flip up. Or you can flip it up, but then he's completely changing his form. He's not a ball anymore. So if you want him like this, he's going to flip this way, then flip up this way, and then be a flat pancake this way so i know what you're trying to do you're trying to make him kind of keep that thing and then really kind of in mid-air charge and zoom up i think it would be i think what would have been better um is to have had him exit the shot right exit the shot so then he would have really come down hard on the spring or maybe he would have missed the spring so that would have been funny. Doink, 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 doink. Oh, he missed the spring, right? And then he looks back here. Now, this is nice. So he goes back. And I like the timing here because it almost feels like he stops himself. He Like, you you, you think he's going to push himself and he'll hit the other wall. But I like what you've done here. It's like he almost feel forces himself to stop. Then he takes a couple of bounces. And he goes straight onto the spring. Now, I think it would have been nice to have a few more on the spring, just to feel the spring. But here you've gone straight into it. And again here, as he comes down, a lovely timing on that. Nice hang time, good stuff. As he comes down, now can you see like he's lost a lot of mass. He's lost a lot of mass. So look how big he is here. Look how small he is here. He's stretched, he's squashed. But he's got to distribute the mass, right? So he's really pushing himself down on there. Now, as he comes up, I think he should be higher than this, personally. Because unless you want him to aim that spring. So unless he can kind of like aim the spring to that side. But then this is just like a physics thing. So if he's aiming the spring then he's going to shoot this way. Otherwise, he's going to shoot straight up and, and into the thing. But in spite of that, because you, you've chosen that path, it's okay. Somehow he's ended up there, and I like the fact that you've used multiples, and I love the spring uh, stagger back. 
I like the spring stagger back. That works really well when you look at that. Doink, really nice, really nice. Doink, yep, like nice stuff. I would have done it with multiples on the spring. I would have like had a, a big spring here and a, another one here and a few lines here and then I would have played it and had that there and that there. But you know what I like about this is, is you haven't done that. You've done it in your own way and you solved it and it works. So that's really, really good. Um, what you've got going on there. I like the timing in spite of the fact that I don't understand how it's got from there to there. You've you've managed to convey the big effect here, which is really good. I'm going to watch what you've done. You've got multiples, doink, 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 doink. Nice stuff. And then it rolls down here. It would have been nice if it would have collided with the wall, but you've kind of made him stop himself again and go back. Maybe because you felt that you were taking too long and you wanted to get through it quicker. I don't know. There could be a bit of that. Uh, but it's always better to take it further with those big moves. So I like the anticipation here. I like the little looking around. A few little happy bounces. This is my favorite part. The whole timing of this section here. I love this. Going back, going forward. I love that little anticipation as, as it goes back. Um, yeah, and then as it comes back on itself. After the few little bounces, oopsie, we're gonna. I've been going backwards, so we go here, then it looks, and then what I like is as it comes back, nice spacing here, big space into the slow in, stopping with a nice little stretch. Again, it feels like it's a little small, loses a bit of mass here, so just a little bit, you know just a little bit more bigger longer perhaps feels like it's a little too short to be the same ball but apart from that the timing is great um, on that that's my favorite bit and i like the sudden acceleration out so if we watch that again you, you'll see how nicely that that works that's really nice right now here it's a little it's a little awkward, like you're you're keeping him stuck to the wall. Maybe if you want to do something like that, you're going to have him go up the wall, stick to the wall, slide down a little bit, right? Because so, it kind of just sticks to the wall after the first bounce. You're going to want to... The thing is, is what you're doing, you're not doing anything wrong timing-wise because this is your plan. It's more your acting. It's more acting. If you're going to do a big anticipation like that, we're going to want to see at least one or two or three bounces before we have a sudden stick. Here you've kind of gone and you've just done after the first bounce, you put a sudden stop there like that. So that's why it's more to do with your choices, acting choices. Your actual timing, arcing and execution is fine on, on the whole, but I, I would say it's more to do with that that's kind of letting it down a little bit, right? So again here, it comes to the top. It would be nice if it just fell without the anticipation. But again, the timing is really nice when it falls. Here, look, doink, doink. He stops himself from falling, looks around. It's those little things I really like. And I really like this. The roll coming here. I don't mind this one so much. This is almost like a video game where it comes up here and goes into the wall. This this is nice, comes up here, drops to the bottom, looks and has a happy celebration, which is extremely cute and then rolls out. So on the whole, um, I'm going to talk to you because you're working really hard. Selena's worked her way through the whole of the library, the basics, the intermediate and the advanced. But just because you learn something, it doesn't mean that. You know, just because you've gone through this doesn't mean that you're going to be comfortably now able to just magically do everything. So she's very wisely gone back to the very beginning, the basics archive. But now she's approaching that basics archive with all of the knowledge that she's acquired from the other archives, such as trying to get the life in there, trying to put personality into this ball 
and this is where the real what selena is doing what you're doing selena is something very very wise because what you're doing is what you're really stepping into the realm of what that r stands for which is a real animator because what really separates the real animator from the the movement puppeteer in my uh, opinion is that illusion of life that personality the acting and the best thing you can do right now is to not worry about drawing and wasting your time with drawing all these details and movements especially if you've made the wrong acting choices or weaker acting choices the best thing you can do is play around with acting play around with those uh, laws of life right you primary secondary action exaggeration appeal staging anticipation squash and stretch follow through overlap and drag timing arcing slowing in slowing out pose to pose and straight ahead solid drawing those are the all the 12 laws it's now time to combine those laws of movement into the laws of life so by doing it with this ball this round circle you're saving yourself so much time and energy imagine if you were doing that with a full-on character right keeping the volume executing it per perfectly but then it felt like some of those bits just felt a little bit off it, it would be because you know you just chose the weaker acting choices that's all just weaker under uh, choices of arc so now is the time so if I, if you've come back here with this second attempt selena and you're thinking well a and b is still saying that i didn't get it right and, I, and you're feeling a little bit i'm not saying that you are but maybe you're taking what I'm saying and you're thinking I've done all this training and I can't even get the bouncing ball. It's only attempt number two. And the thing is, is you know you can do the other stuff, right? You you can move a character. You've you've followed along with my in the advanced archives, you've moved that dog around in that advanced quadruped walk cycle that we do in the advanced archive. That's a difficult character. You know you can move those things around okay you've drawn that to model and you've moved it around but now you're going moving away from being a junior animator or a cleanup artist level because that's what they do right selena that's what they do now you want to start thinking about how to put life into your animation and this this is gonna solve so don't think for a moment that you're getting anything wrong here or don't try to beat yourself up and think that well you know after all this now i'm still struggling with the bouncing ball you're not str the, i've always said for me the bouncing ball is the hard <coughs> hardest thing you're ever gonna do uh because you've got nothing else you, you're focusing on this boring round ball right and you're gonna judge that there's no pretty pretty woman or muscular man or anime or fighting to hide behind right you're just looking at this boring round ball doing these things and the beauty of it is is it doesn't take you very long to do it so if you get it wrong who cares you you now can move on and make stronger acting choices or stronger um whatever so that's very very important that's why i've turned it on to facetime so I can talk to you because I'm really proud of you, Selena. I'm really proud of you, the work that you're doing. As I was doing this tailspin thing, I was half thinking, should I bother in betweening it myself or should I just pay Selena to do it because it would be a good exercise. I know that you could do it. See, I know you can in between. I know you can keep things solid. But this is actually better for you to, uh, to do this kind of stuff this will really take you to the next level which is where we want to be right so i know that it might be frustrating you had a second shot at it and while i've said some good things about it i've also said well you're losing mass this is this such and such and you know your choices of acting could be better that's only because you're doing the real thing now okay you're actually animating right and you're not wasting time and energy drawing unnecessary stuff that isn't going to work so it's going to take longer to get to the same conclusion right we want efficiency
efficiency, 100% efficiency. So doing it this way, that's what we got. So great stuff, great test. If you want to move on to something else now outside of the bouncing ball, maybe a flower sack, go ahead and do it. But I would suggest to you to stay with the either the ball or I'm not going to use those terms, either the bouncing ball or the or the flower sack. OK, um, you use just stay within those because that way you're going to save time and get your acting focus. This is where we come back to the acting, which is, you know, contrary to what I was saying earlier about people talking about the flower sack being a beginner exercise. For me, it's an intermediate then advanced exercise. Because once you've got all that, why waste your time growing a character, right? Get the acting right with a simple shape first. It's easy. It's quick. But if you don't know these 12 laws, if you've no understanding of these 12 laws and you're just playing with the flower sack, what's the point? Waste of time, waste of energy, you know, kids at work, you know. So it's time to come back to the flower sack with sensibility, armed with the 12 laws of animation. Okay. Deruji says he's uh, thinking about a little playful interaction between these two characters. I still haven't designed on a final model for the man. I would think more a little bit about the actions, uh, Deruji. It's it's an interesting thing, but then I feel that we could. You're again. You're using your anatomy here, but I would. I would think of the both of them as a unit, as a shape. So let me look at that, what you've got. Um, where is it? It's here. Let me put that here. Right. So again, you're just going to animate the shape, right? You're going to animate the two of them as, as shapes, right? So then you're going to want to you're also going to want to contrast now you could have a powerful you could have a powerful female and a powerful male all right there's no reason why not but i've i've chose to draw with the ma the male hair so i'm going to give him a powerful statuesque pose right within that shape and then you're going to contrast that with you know the female who could be powerful as well, right? But then, see, I'm trying to look for ways to keep the shape. Maybe she's resting on him and the weight distribution is here. So, again, I, I know I've had you learn anatomy and I know I've had you really work on anatomy, but now, you know, you see, I want, let me tell you that old Zen story which I've told many times, Deruji, right? So, here we've got like the man and the woman. Now I'm here talking animation, so if you want the woman to support the man, go knock yourself out. I've drawn it in the with the man supporting the woman, right? It's whatever, right? It's ridiculous times where I feel I even have to justify whatever, right? So anyway, so the the important thing is is, is I've had you learn anatomy. To get your drawing so this is your cup now you filled this cup with anatomy deruji right you've even gone and done muscles when i haven't even built the muscle archive yet i know that's my bad i will be on it soon um but now you have to empty this because you want to pour in all these other laws of animation and it's overflowing with you now everything you're drawing is Everything you're animated, even the last thing you did, is all these segmented shapes, right? Um, getting, thinking about the anatomy of the shapes. And we're moving away from the basic essence of what, you know, how did I start? I start with this, right? Then I see the triangles of the legs here. We're moving away from the basic essence of the secret science of shape simplification. So that anatomy cup, it's not like you're throwing it away. Let's let's imagine that this is your nose, this is your mouth, right? 
you've drunk it down, you've digested, you've, you, you've taken the anatomy in, right? So, you, but you need to, it's, it's a little whiskey, it's a little whiskey, whiskey cup, right? Let's put your little pinky up there. You, you've taken the anatomy in, right? Because now you've got to fill it with basic shapes again, right? Basic shapes, appeal, right? This is, the, this is one of the reasons why comic books suck at cartooning, right? People who draw comic books really struggle with cartoon characters. They really struggle with drawing appeal in cartoon characters. Whereas, that's why I'm, I'm not all cartoonists are good, but the Disney animator, the, the strong A-grade Disney animator, he will understand muscle and anatomy like what you see me doing all the time, right? So... It's not a it's not an issue for me to go in here and do that comic book stuff, right? But I have also understood what shapes are, right? I've also understood how to break things into appealing shapes. Let's make it a, a fat Baloo the bear kind of shape, right? Let's let's turn his foot out this way. Let's turn his foot that way. So it's all the same thing. And then you'll start putting bits of anatomy in there. But it's it's then relying on these on these shapes, right? That that's gonna and then mixing that with anatomy in there. So everything so I can come in here and draw it and then if if I was so inclined to make it a, a muscular character, I could, right? You can make it whatever you want when you've got the basic shape, but what you can't have, what you, what you need to learn through the shape language is appeal, right? You need to learn appeal. See, if I have his head straight here, it's going to be boring. I have his nose up here. I have his mouth open up here. That's appeal, right? And appeal comes through understanding the shape language, right? So again, here I could have his head would be down here. That that would be more appeal. But then I'd have to think about his an anatomy of his neck in regard to that, right? So you need to stop in an essence stop animating like this which is what we do in the basics archive with the stick man right because we're learning to manage all these shapes but then in the intermediate archive we move from the stick man to this right because for the reason is now we know about shapes we now want to put appeal into shapes which is why basic to the to the non initiated okay the non real animator training person they might think the basic is more advanced than the intermediate right but not at all okay because this doesn't really have appeal right this is just like you're getting used to moving a bunch of shapes and making them look like they're doing something oh look they're walking right now you're gonna now you're gonna put a peel into them right with a blob because a blob is easy to learn with right um do you teach about effective character design not so much in the training library i have a few lectures i might build more drawing archives my youtube channel is full of um i'll tell you what um is it in the free view is it in the free view Go to uh, ambanimation.com, go to Freeview, right? Um, okay, yeah, here you got, here you got this video, character design, okay? I teach about the silhouette, so this, how long is this, uh, how long is this video? This is free, this is before my little red project even got started, it was started as this live stream, right? So I teach about designing. So we just designed basically the character for this little red thing. Yeah, she's a little bit younger here. I aged her up a bit. So I got a video all about designing her for free 
on here okay and then I've got another one so here you can see she became this full-on trailer right so here I got another one where we talk about designing of the wolf right and I got another one where we talk about designing the concept art uh, and the location design so go check it out this is some of the best free material you're ever gonna see right and and then I later went on to make this a whole um, animated trailer right so um, let's just play that go and watch the trailer right it's on my channel whatever that it's on here so the thing is is like yeah i mean i always lead by example i you know so everything you see all this amazing stuff you see just me one guy doing i'm giving it away for free a lot of it like how you know not even as courses like because to be honest you got to be super advanced to be able to do that what that is anyway so that's why i know i'm being straight up with you if you want to get to to my level you got to basically sign up to my course but if you're just looking for tips i'm giving it away for free i'm showing you all the pre-production i did for that whole thing and i rushed it out that was it right i just rushed it that's the character that's the bad guy that's the background okay there it is that's the film right so it's all there for free for you so um aaron blaylock thank you for the question and the opportunity for me to share my free stuff uh with you guys so that's my feedback on that daruji uh you know um good luck with that project but if just try to work on simplifying things the lovely herbonia baker has completed the pendulum settling to a stop jump 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 um, yes there's a little bit of uh, this is I'm glad that this is the thing a great exercise Hervonia now you're gonna have to keep on doing this exercise so this is the difficult this is the hardest part the law of slowing in and slowing out one of the three fundamental laws arcing timing and slowing in and slowing out as you've slowed this in now you have put this here to help you but this is starting to wander now you haven't done it this badly right it's starting to wander a bit from here to here so as you're trying to settle that thing to a stop right and keep it solid that's kind of going from left to right a bit don't worry don't redo it because you're going to be doing it all the time with all the other pendulum like so you'll you'll understand why real animator training is so powerful right no point redoing this okay you're going to be doing it in the next exercise anyway right so but your weight is good the timing's good it's just there we see the problem you see and this is why i stress to people who who don't want to do the beginner's archive of real animated training if you can't slow in a pendulum settling to a stop right with a, with ease and get it perfect right what makes you think you're going to be slowing in an eye with like so here's the pupil here's the little ball of light here's the iris here's the eye shape here's the eyelash here's the eyebrow now let's say you got to slow that settling let's say you've even just got to slow it down by 10 frames there's got to be 10 frames between hair and hair oh you use software and get that awful crummy cut out uncanny valley shit look right okay well then don't be a real animator go be a digital puppeteer thank you very much for stopping on my channel but i'm here to talk to real animators right so you want to have the skill to be able to slow in and out of that shape and the thing is is you say well you know uh, you're being hard on the digital puppeteers look it looks shit and the thing is is oftentimes as i was talking to selena nina earlier like it's not always going to be the same shape right the eye is gonna maybe change but you don't want it to look like it's morphing you want it to distribute so even if you're slowing in from a 
slight angry expression into a more angry expression, you're going to want to keep those things solid and those volumes working. So if you can't do that with a ball and a pendulum, for heaven's sake, how do you think you're going to successfully do that with all of those details? Never mind the nose and the hair and everything else. So a valiant effort, Hervonia, it's more or less, I would say, 80% uh, there. Just that little bit of the um, head of the pendulum where the string attaches to the ball. A little bit of wandering going on there. Um, Angela Walker, single suspension gallop. Nice, Angela. Nice. A little bit tidier as well. Yes. He's a little elongated at point because here he's big, right? And here he's a little small. So while you're squashing and stretching, he's shrinking in size a little bit, which makes it him feel like we can feel there's some some kind of awkward difference. Is he getting longer and is he getting fatter? That's only because instead of stretching, he's just he is stretching, but he's also shrinking in size. And when he's squashing, he's becoming very big, right? So here he's a lot bigger in the squashed up pose than he is in the in this pose right here. So that's the only thing that makes it feel a little like a sausage, awkward squash and stretch in the middle. But for you, Angela Walker, this is a this is a huge success, a huge improvement over the other stuff that you've been posting. So give yourself a round of applause. I'm not going to uh linger on that one and give you explanations because i think yeah, that that in uh that in context to everything we've talked about has been a massive success so well done well done maybe the process of repetition the power of real see that another power of real animated training why do i call it training instead of learning because learning is a fool's game right people get stuck in the learning zone we don't learn, we train, right? What is train? Training is repetition. Through the power of repetition, you're doing walks, runs, bounces, all these things, but you're doing, you basically, I'm teaching you by stealth, by making you do the same things over and over again in a slightly different way to stop you from getting bored. It's repetition that's getting the results here. So well done, Angela. For you, that is a huge um success looks like kevin silver agrees um <clears throat> alex is doing a uh, uni alex is a training library member but uni is always getting in his way and slowing him down um so this isn't training library stuff for uni i did some rough animation um a little mixed how it came out i feel i did a good job with the timing i made a good attempt with the hair physics however the hair and other parts could have been a lot better <coughs> The context of the scene, the fisherman hears songs of the siren and looks around to see a strange creature. Oh, you got my attention now, if there's sirens. Um, that's actually good. I like it. I don't know about him seeing sirens and hearing a strange sound. I'm looking at it because you're, you haven't even finished the basics archive of the training library so i'm looking at it as somebody who's just playing around with the timing arcing slowing in and slowing out and we have it right nice timing on the head rise i'm not so interested in the model or the consistency what i like is is the way you've turned his head into a simple shape so you can manage it right then a turning hair is good and then, yeah and then there's variation in the speed he turns at um the only thing letting it down is the consistency in the model. You know, he's got rounded shoulders here. He's got pointed shoulders here. He hasn't... You know better than this, Alex. You're the same Alex doing the anatomy, right? Um, just double check that you are. Come on now. I pressed that. Yeah, yeah, you are. You're my friend Alex. I believe you're in the UK. A Greek guy in the UK. Um, come on now. So... What's stopping you from using, I know you haven't done the, I don't think you've done the training library head turn yet, but 
you know about the clavicle, you know that the clavicle inserts the head hair. So even if you're dealing with this basic shape guy hair, right? Even if you're dealing with this basic shape guy hair, uh, you could you could like, you know, we do this in the basics archive. This is why I teach you this. So if he's hunching down, then you could make that. You could make that shape, even that basic. You could attach that to a sphere, right? Right, so if he's hunching down the clavicles here, the necks here, right? So all of this, all of this is like, this is flat, this is round, this is, this is a really crude way. I remember one, like years and years ago, before I did any training library, I used to do free YouTube contents. And I took the video down because people were, was a very popular video but I thought I'm I'm actually making life worse for people because people got into the this this thing which was a good way of understanding a face on a head but if you don't know the anatomy of the face it's going to look shit it's going to just look really really flat but it's good enough if you're just playing and you're at this beginner stage but then to think of this as a formula unless you really know what you're doing with a human face it can be a formula just like the diamond right but unless you really know how to draw a face properly, it's gonna, people are gonna think this is the golden secret and then their drawings are gonna have this weird flat stamped on, you know. Here's the finger, the pinky out, stamping the face on this flat piece of paper, right? So, but it's a good, it's an easy way to get started. So what I will say is, is I like that. I don't mind the animation, but I feel there's, um, you've dealt with simple shapes and you've knocked it out quickly. So, but you, you, th th there really should be no excuse after all your anatomy study the, to, to, to have the, uh, the neck, you know, what's going on here with his neck, right? So here he's got these rounded shoulders. Then suddenly he's like, completely hasn't got a trapezius here right um and then it moves up around here moves there but not not bad uh i'm, I'm quite happy with the actual timing it's got it's got a sense of timing to it so um well done um uh, gerbis is right i like the timing on this yeah amberly ferro i don't know if she's still gone to bed or uh, if she is, she's back in the U. I'm so happy she's using this old, um, sometimes the simple ones are simple is better. I've always loved this particular drawing of hers, uh, of her character. I know the characters come a long way, but there's something so appealing about this flat cartoon version. Um, I don't know if she's still around. Oh, she's still here. Yeah. So she's done the AMB exercise. Now I saw this on Twitter and I told her that it's not, she says the volumes are pretty fine. The lines on the head go a tag wonky. It's not really important. Like the thing is, is I told her on Twitter that it's not important to copy it exact. What is important is that we get the, um, we understand and I can see her now doing her own cycles. Get out. Shut up. Sorry, I'm just going to wait here till that piece of shit um, finishes, right? So here we've got we've got her basic quadruped walk. Now, off the get-go, I can tell the proportions are really strange. Um, maybe she's used to drawing her characters, so she's given it this um, this head like this or whatever. That that is irrelevant. Um, it's a little bit relevant because it's good to be able to draw to model and it's good to be able to train yourself to get proportions. But she's I, she's on the Bluth course as well. And she's, you know, I think she's just trying to tie all this stuff into into whatever she's doing, which is what a lot of people are going to want to do. Um, so she's gone through this exercise. She's done it on paper, which is great. And the first thing I noticed is, is although the legs are kind of plonky in the back, what I really love about it is I can really see um, the anatomy working on this thing, right? 
there's a little bit of a the, the pelvis is a little bit now she's online here I can tell her what I meant like the the thing giving it that plonky feel is is like your pelvis is always kind of a little bit pointing too much to the sky so as these guys are coming up they're plonking down a little bit I think if you look at um is it Cameron Cameron's exercise is a little bit his his proportions are you know he's made the head too small um but if we go down and we see Cameron's so here we just look at Cameron's hair you can see Cameron's hair if you see the pelvis so his head is a little bit too small his pelvis is a little bit straighter so it's a little bit more natural it's not so plonky plonky right so the the linking between the forwards and the backwards legs is quite fluid and when I say fluid it's not because it's ones it's it's kind of naturalistic um, but that said what I like about your one <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me Yahoo! what I like about this is your although you've got that effect in, in a weird way your your skinning is better than uh, Cameron's meaning that the harmony between the front and the back while you've got the pelvis pointing upwards giving it that plonky feel You've got the deformation and turning in the body um, happening. So we can see the front and back. Um, we can actually see that front body twisting and the, you know, rotating as we can see the back body, which is really, really good. Um, he's got a little bit of a longer body, which also makes it makes that back leg. But I don't mind. In a way, that blonking feel gives it this nice cartoon timing, which I which I really like, and it kind of helps that that tail. It almost feels like that tail is marching along with that blonking rear leg. It's really cute, actually, and the cartoon head ties it together. So a lot of it is maybe just your own your own uh, unconscious habits of your naturally appealing way of doing things, which has been applied to this uh, mechanical dog. But what I like about it is, I was really happy, Amberly. I'm not going to say any more about that because you didn't post it in here. But uh, I'm going to come on the screen just to talk to you. You didn't post it in the in the group, but you immediately went on and you were doing this walk cycle of this dog limping with its back leg, it hopping on its back leg and walking with its front leg. And I could immediately see the stuff that you'd learned from this one being applied into that one. And I thought, now that is, that's really, really uh, successful. That, that, that was really, so I really, I really felt that what you had done in this exercise, um, what you had done in this exercise, you really was able to absorb and carry it over into that little test you're doing now i always advise against uh deviating from the training library but amberly is all about that you know she's gone to two different universities now she's also at bluth university while being at the in the training library so she's also molding sculptures on paper so she is who she is she's gonna do things and she's gonna you know duck out of the training and then go and try things does it mean that it'll slow her down in my opinion yes but i don't think she cares i think she's quite happy with the, her journey as she is right now so it's all when i say don't deviate don't change the exercises don't do whatever i mean that but at the same time there are gonna be what some people out there that are gonna do that anyway and they're going to be, you know, doing a pretty good job, which is what Amberly's doing. So just let her get on with what she's doing. Um, it's great to see the stuff that you're posting in here. But at the same time, if you do uh, deviate and you end up not being happy, this is why I advise the people not to deviate. Back when you first did the streams on YouTube, you show each stage 
for the dog cycle. I remember how do you animate a dog limping? Now I can. Yeah. Understand the basics. Understand the pelvis. Understand the front to back. Understand the beats of the, the leg. The one beat, two beat, three beat, four beat. And it all becomes easy. You know. Um, so long as you follow along. And so she followed along to the training exercise. She didn't deviate. But now she's deviating. But if, if you know, there's so much more to learn. So just, you know, but anyway. So, but just understand uh, why I say don't deviate is because I want you to get to the end. I want you to get the knowledge as soon as possible, right? Because oftentimes you go off track and sometimes you stay off track. Amberly goes off track, but somehow she always finds herself back. And I'm like, oh, wow, she did the dog cycle. So there are people out there who kind of are comfortable, who know what they're doing. So when they deviate, they know they've got the discipline or whatever to come back, which is what I, why I kind of like don't really seem to care too much what Amberly does in terms of like, I'm going to Bluths now. I'm going to this now. I'm like, well, she seems to have enough self-discipline to her head's kind of everywhere, but she seems to have enough self-discipline to kind of go back on track. So maybe whatever she's doing at Bluths or whatever she's doing um, with uh, her sculpting, that's also coming to real animator training is deviating from that. So she's going... She's probably on three or four different journeys right now and is is aligning them all together. But many of you are just, you know, oh, well, the results aren't there yet. I want to be doing anime fight scenes, but I don't know how to animate. And it's a different mentality. So that's why to most of you, I say, don't deviate from the training. Um, stick to it. Otherwise, you're going to go off track, stay off track, and never be back on track. Uh, Zentron, how are you doing? Okay. Um, let's get rid of me. So that was great. Um, Crystal, so Crystal, on the 24th of March, she accessed the free training. The free training is not working at the moment. So she said the notes, the part one... The part one didn't cover the timing, so it looks like she's tried to time this herself. The cleaned, it's not, but it's clearer. At least the lines on the third cycle did use some software smoothing. I was having bad hand cramps, but I wanted to show it clearer than roughs. I wouldn't worry ever. I wouldn't worry at all about clean work, especially as an absolute beginner, Crystal. Um, it's it's just. Here's, before I even look at that, here's something I have to tell you. I tell things many times. This is you, right? You've only got, you've got all this power and energy. This is the energy of the, of the earth, the world, like energy, right? That's your supply, right? Now, some of that's going into, I don't know, friends. I don't even know how to friend, spell friends. Do I have any, right? Um, family. Uh, eating, toiletries. So these are stuff, maybe friends you can cut out. It's difficult to cut family, but maybe if you're hard, right? I'm not suggesting it. So that's why I said these are stuff that kind of have to be there. So they're already taking up that energy. What else is taking up your energy? Now, these are the things you can cut out. Netflix, gaming. Instagram, or just to say internet browsing, internet browsing, right? So they're also taking it. Now drawing, animating, right? Keeping the animation clean, right? So imagine if you're going to want to cut, you just want to focus on animating. You want to cut clean, you want to cut drawing for the time being, right? Just for the time being. You want to cut internet browsing, you want to cut gaming, you want to cut Netflix, right? So all of that 
energy is now gone to understanding how to animate properly, right? The problem is, is a lot of people want to be the finished article when they have barely even begun and they're obsessed with this. They're obsessed with this, right? They're obsessed with this. But this is never ever gonna look right if it's on a weak foundation, right? So, I can't even spell it. So logic would be that you develop a strong foundation, right? Which is understanding the three laws, timing, arcing, And slowing in and slowing out. I don't know why I said three to one. It could be one, two, three, right? Timing is the first rule of it all. So you want your energy to just go into that. So don't worry about, you see, it's it's really is a waste of time. There's no way of putting it. Because when you want to be clean and tidy, you gotta be slow. I could sit here and draw this, right? And I could make it a, it could be just for myself. So I'm storyboarding for myself. Nobody has to see this. It serves the purpose. There's his fist there, right? There's his other fist there, right? That's enough. Nobody's going to see that but me. Now I can go away and make it look good in my own time. But when I go away and make it look good in my own time, what's going to happen to my time, right? gonna come in here I'm gonna say all right let's get his eye line right let's get this right one he's 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 like one and a half eye widths apart already the time is being wasted right if if I didn't know it was gonna work but when you get to a certain level you do know it's gonna work right so even this I've got to make this line before I do all this right I've got to kind of put a muzzle on him even though he doesn't have a muzzle in the finished design i've got to put his teeth i've got to think about where his jaw is because that jaw actually is where all that is right i've got to get the round of his head so and then i've got to go and clean it up again so what's happening to my time if i didn't know that this is going to work if i didn't know how to do it it would be wasted right so when people are learning animation, for God's sake, please work rough because you're not really, it's not worth, you know, this is not, this is why I call it real animated training. It's real talk. I'm not try, trying to sweet talk people or anyone. It's not worth cleaning up if it doesn't work, right? Um, well, anyway, let's have a look. Good. It looks like you followed the lecture and it looks good. So, I actually really like what you've done. It looks like you've really followed that lecture to the letter. I like the curling. Now you put a little bit of a straight line there, but I like the curling. This is very, very good work, Crystal very very good work this is really so this you know she's using the free training unfortunately i'll get it to work i don't know why the free training archive is not working at the moment i'm going to try one more time maybe vimeo has sorted this out uh kitchikat said that she couldn't uh so in the featured sex someone's posted while i'm straining uh streaming i can't talk about that um that wasn't posted in the morning, so I'm not going to comment on that one. So you should get, be able to go in here and paste this password. But for some reason, it's freezing. It's frozen. I'm going to have to go into my Vimeo and sort that out. Why I can't get you guys to... Why? So the, Crystal has followed the free flower sack exercise in there. That should be available to you if you join this group, 
Um, I'll sort that out soon. Okay, so this was on the 21st of March. We're now on the 4th of April here in New Zealand. When I told you that um, I was unable to live stream, that was because I was not feeling my best. Uh, my my wife, my daughter and I had a infection. I'm now over that. So uh, that's why the stream is back on today. Studies of Rourke. This is what I like to see, Daniel Garcia. Simple shapes. This is what I like to see. Excellent studies, by the way. Good studies. Um, Akau is... You no know, need to in between this unless you want to, Akau. Akau is studying uh, the, the mighty Bruce Smith's uh, Dr. Facilier. Now, his pencil line is very, very... Uh, very, very faint... So I don't know if you can see Akau's wonderful uh, drawings of Dr. Facilier. I'm very impressed with this Akau. Um, the shapes are nice. I would say the brim of the hat is a little bit flat and it's growing here. Okay. The your, I know it's tricky because what you're trying to do, what, what, what you're seeing is, is you're probably seeing the volume between his hat more hair than it is hair right so it's there's less space hair and more space hair it's tricky because you're you're looking at it as a drawing but you gotta again you gotta understand what it is it's like you gotta understand the whole secret science of shape simplification thing which you do you've been through the training library but so you we've got to understand that we're looking at that head right and in the next frame this guy is going to be a little bit lower, right? And this is going to, the space is going to be a bit, so no, look, notice how I'm focusing on the ellipses, right? So even though that's kind of in the same thing, I'm focusing on the ellipse. Now I'll turn that light box off and that's how we get that feeling of the, the brim of the hat. We need to think about the perspective, right? Whereas your thing, we, we don't really feel the perspective change in um, in that. It, it just feels like there's a, you know, the drawing is a little, you, you, because I, I think you're, you're, you're copying from the screen. So there's a little bit of drawing, hand-eye coordination drawing going on here and less animating in that regard. So there's a little bit of inconsistencies in his hat here, right? Um, but a really nice exercise, Akau. I wouldn't in between this, all right? I wouldn't in between this. I would go back and fix the drawings and the, the keys and the space, the, the, the irregularities, and I would make these shapes nicer. I would strengthen these drawings even more you 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 again energy Akal, the explanation i gave of energy before it's a waste of time and energy to in between this right we, so this is someone else's animation you're not gonna win any prizes for doing a fluid piece of copying someone else's animation what you are gonna win as a prize is you're gonna understand nice shapes you're gonna understand shape harmony between key breakdown poses the arcs and all these things so, which you're already making notes of here, I can see, which is all good. So, go and strengthen these drawings, all right? Go and, you know, at the moment, they still feel like more like, okay, you've copied the drawing, but I want to see the animation theory. If, if the guy's neck is hair and his shoulders are hair, I want to see that pose feeling more like, okay, and his more we can really feel that that's the movement of the pose right um as opposed to it looking like you you really looked and you remember when i do these drawings um on the beginning of the live streams and we 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 you see me doing these studies right it's very different to when i animate and draw right i don't so when you're doing the breakdowns and when you see me doing the Naruto stuff, you're seeing me doing all that. Just, 
you're seeing me just looking at the Naruto like you're seeing me just focusing on the silhouettes and the basic shapes, right? I'm trying to remember the Naruto characters, right? But you're just seeing me focusing on... No, he had something like that, right? So you're just seeing me focusing on the... on the basic shapes and getting those shapes and then going in there the reason we focus on those shapes is, is then you can go in there and copy but then when you're copying it's all it's it's all about one shape moving into the next shape right and as long as you get that right so it's not one drawing becoming the next drawing right however accurate you get it to look if your mentality is is like this drawing i've copied like this and now the next drawing is like this no you want to look at the shape this shape is like this this shape has turned into this shape right the secret science of shape simplification but that said akau it's looking very nice it's going to turn a few heads so i would work on on strengthening these drawings going heavy on them weighting your line uh really making a really learning so don't in between it that's my advice to you in betweening it will be a waste of time and energy what do we have here we have the lovely hervonia baker and what is the lovely hervonia baker wearing thank you so much <laughs> hervonia for supporting amb animation uh and getting the amb hoodie it means a lot i appreciate that um Charlene says um how are you doing I'm doing well uh steadily working in your training I'm posting an update of where I am on the 360 head rotation so this is an advanced lecture this one really brings out the perfectionist in me no 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 we don't want that right perfectionist means grinding to a halt I started to notice inconsistencies and I had to start over numerous times. No, we don't want that either. But with each try I was able to practice more and more. Here's the thing. Charlene, I want you to visualize. I'm going to draw Charlene with a cute big frazzly hair like this because that's how I see her in my mind, right? So Charlene's hair, right? This is Char Charlene. It's a little in joke, right? So this is Charlene, right? Now, Charlene's determined. She's got her, let's put her glasses here. Let's make it look extra cute, right? Let's give her a skirt, right? Make her look like a Peanuts character. I don't know why. Right, now, um, this is the goal, right? So, The thing is, is to just walk up to the door, Charlene, open it, right, and walk through. Now in there, you might not find anything, right? So you may have to come back out and do it again, right? That's repetition. That's doing things over and over again. But what you're doing is, is you're going here and going, oh, no, I'd better walk back here and I'll go here. And I better walk back here. You're not even getting to the finish of it. Out of this thing called fear. That you're going to get it wrong. Fear is a bitch. Right? It's better to walk up to it and through it. And if you get it wrong, who cares? Right? Don't allow this thing. That's what perfectionism is. Right? Perfectionism is procrastination all under the guise of this thing called fear which makes it um which makes getting there in the end so i feel your pain charlene and i feel everything you've gone through because i've been through it myself i want it really bad i want it to be a amazing animator really bad and I can tell you uh, from the other side because I really do. And I think you know in my heart of hearts, you know that I believe I'm an amazing animator now. 
So I can tell you that you will get there. And uh, if you frequent on my streams and you talk to me more often, then I can share my experiences with you. And that's what I'm doing with the training library. So the thing is, is wherever you are now, there's always going to be something not quite right with this. And that's absolutely fine. All right. Just see it through and move on. See it through and move on. Right. Don't keep looking for problems because you, even in my work, in anybody's work, in Glenn Keane's work, in Don Bluth's work, in Richard Williams's work, in James Baxter's work, if you're so, listen, if you're so hell-bent on looking for something that you can find wrong, you will find it. Because the law, okay, of polarity a universal law here's a pole here's one side here's the other side this is right this is wrong you can't do away with it until unless you do away with the pole you can cut this pole all the way around here and say this is right but then now it's got two ends again right right and wrong you can't just have one side there's always going to be this side so even if it's down to a little line, there's this side and there's this side. It's law, all right? It is law. It cannot be undone. Where there is something right, there is always something wrong, right? So it's futile. So please don't, don't, if you see problems that are so big, then stop. But if you, if they're minor little things, then it's okay, right? So here we have attempt one. Now attempt two actually works less for me than attempt one. Because now you're trying to go, I know why you do why why you did this, because I had this conversation with you about flopping the drawing and about having it working having it working from this way, right? And then when you flip it, it's got to work from the other way, right? And how the front has got to unify it. But I actually like your front in attempt one better, Charlene, because you've kind of given it this, almost like this Egyptian style hat head, right? Actually the eye line, like now, because you wanted to get the parietal sections even on either side. The thing is, is, What's happening is, is now you're trying too hard. And that reminds me of one of my favorite books, Power versus Force. Okay, you can never force it, right? You have the power to do it always. But the urge, urgency, Urgency makes people do stupid things. I'm not saying what you're doing is stupid, but there's a why. That's why a lot of people invest a lot of money on certain courses and things or whatever, or even a little amount of money because they've been sold through this trick called urgency. Now, you can do it now. Now is the time. You know, if not now, it's never. It, urgency of that human urge to want to have it now right but the thing is is the thing is is if you understand i like talking philosophy to you charlene because i know you like this so i i, I like talking this to you now is eternal right now never ends you can say now but now is always now the moment before was no longer now the moment before if you're remembering it is now so you will have it now if you understand that you have the power and you have the persistence and you see things through. What is excellence? I'll tell you what excellence is. There was a book called In Search of Excellence, right? I never read it, but I read a lot of notes about it. It's out of print, which is really upsetting me because I really want to read it. In Search of Excellence. And one of the notes that I tattooed to my inner eyelids was its excellence is simply the commitment commitment is it two m's commitment to completion right 
I'm so glad I have spell check nowadays, right? Clearly my spelling, see, I've, I've completed it whether I spelled it right or not, all right? So excellence is the commitment to completion, right? If I wanted to get good at spelling, I would keep on doing it, right? But I would make sure I'd complete it the first time over, right? So attempt two, we can see this diamond shaped head hair which is a little bit less in attempt one right attempt one it feels a little bit less alien like right so i would say that here's the thing charlene i'm gonna come onto the chat so, so I, I can talk directly to you just see it through see it through and the thing is is if there are things that are not right with it if there are things that are not are not right with it who cares right is it the last thing you'll ever do you know what go away do a head turn of your own daughter character after doing that try to implement the the practices a lot of this advanced archive is also teaching you to understand how to draw on model as well. That's my model. You're following my model. Okay. It's not going to come to you just like that, even after one, two or three attempts. Maybe to some people it might do, but who cares? That doesn't involve you. If the other person got it in the first attempt, big fucking deal. Okay. That's them. This is you. It's meaningless, right? So the thing is, you just control it with it at your speed if it doesn't if it comes out good it comes out good if it comes out a little bit off it comes out a little bit off you've built the brain cells now you can maybe you're in the advanced archive now you can maybe try and do it with your own character i'm going to do a head turn of my daughter character design that i know you have right and and then you can come back to this in a year even or like in a in in four months that's the thing about power versus force you've taken your training this far charlene it's like oh it's 3 a.m you've taken your training uh, uh zentron you're from the uk do you remember that 3 a.m 3 a.m klf uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> i don't know if anybody else knows this old not late early 90s late 80s track completely off topic but the thing is um the thing is charlene is is you now should understand that you have the discipline you've taken it this far right so you don't need to be afraid of getting it wrong right there's nothing to be you've taken it this far you've been in it for this long and whatever you do is now to a certain level right whatever you do you you've gotten to a certain level you have grown right you will get there and you will grow if you don't need to see it now okay but you will see it now if you understand that little philosophical thing about the now i gave you that's the power right just go with it go with it go with it don't try to force it because the forcing creates fear, uncertainty, doubt, anxiety, and it puts you in a state of dis-ease. We want you to be in a state of being at ease, okay? Whereas like, I know this is where I'm at now. That's the best I can do. Great. Let's move on, right? So let's finish the exercise but then don't have to do it again right do it again you know you can do it again for your own sake i know you will come back and want to do it again but the thing is as i know that but when you want to come back and do it again you're going to be a lot more confident about it on force you can't no matter how much you force something and you muscle your way through it it's always gonna you're always gonna have to settle and we don't want you to get into the feeling of settling, right? 
We don't want to get you into the feeling of settling for your work. We want to get you in the feeling of knowing that what you where you're at and being being comfortable with that, being okay with where you're at. <clears throat> because when you're when you're okay with where you're at, it means that you're ready to move on. If you're having to settle with what you've done, even after always forcing it, then you're never going to be okay with what you've done and you're never going to get over it, if you understand what I mean. You're always going to be going into the next project with this. This is something that Travis needs to understand as well. He's always writing comments which actually kind of piss me off. He like he does this great piece of animation and he goes, I didn't put the animation anticipation at the beginning, which hurts this really hard. It's like he's trying to, he's really exaggerating that his work has been ruined. Like, <laughs> come on, Travis. It's like, give yourself a break. It hurts it really hard. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. All right? Doesn't at all. Just be okay with where you are, and then you'll be amazed at how easily and how more flow-like it will be for you to transition into an even better state. And when you're at that even better state and you recognize it, you will still be okay with where you are. The thing is, is never to be too excited because everything just simply is, all right? If negative positive is what you call it. Now, if it's a negative, you're already shitty about it, right? If it's a positive, oh, it's going to turn into a negative sooner or later. So just understand, okay, yeah, that's good. Don't just be enthusiastic. Enthusiastic always beats being overly happy or satisfied or this is great this is great you know i'm i'm there because when you think you're there suddenly you realize i'm not there and you're in for a hard fall right just say okay this is where i'm at now let's see where i'm going to next baby i'm looking forward to that right Okay, A and B, I will continue on it. It was the measurements and alignments that were pretty off in previous attempts and I was out to practice my line work digitally. It was bad compared to traditional. I will relax more. Okay, well, look. One of the things is, is you write these things and I have to interpret what you've written. So also, a lot of the times, you've got your own personal goals. So if you're trying to do this, I feel I've given good advice, not just for you, but for everyone, because it's my life experience. Everything I tell you is simply my own experience that I'm sharing with you, what's worked for me. It might not work for other people, but it's my experience. That's all I can give, right? So <clears throat> as you've got your own personal goal, I want to improve my digital artwork. I want to get the spacing right. Then you know what you're doing, right? You know what you're doing. So that's it. But sometimes I think it's good to see it through to the very end. This is a, another thing, the problem with these, um, this group. This group is great. And it's always great. It's great all round because it's great for community. It's great for real animator training because people see how great real animator training is and they want to join. It's great all round in every possible way. This group is great. But there is a bad side to it. The bad side is, is people post stuff like, for example, this early on, and then you post your thoughts uh, before finishing the exercise, right? Before taking, completing the journey, going through that door. And then I look on the wall because I, you know, I can't, I can't guarantee that I'm always going to do that, but I try to do that when I can do it. And I look on the wall and then I formulate opinions based on stuff that isn't finished. And then I start giving out advice based on that stuff. And then that can send the person in an opposite direction, which is another reason why I, I didn't want to make feedback part of the training library, because the training library is designed to be a self-taught self system. Look, this is a journey. You go on it. And the thing is, is when you look at someone, for example, like Life Fantasy, she has just buried her head down 
gets on with it there it is there it is you look at diana cortez there it is there it is now i'm not saying that if that's if if you guys out there are happy boasting like pedro and whatever this stage of where i'm at in the test even though i haven't finished it there's nothing wrong with that i'm not saying be like angela or be like diana and just boss it out and you know and then it is what it is but the, as long as you know that you haven't finished it and you're on a course where you're supposed to see it through to the end and it'll take you do a certain thing because it's designed on building brain cells it's designed to make you build those brain cells and once those brain cells are built the next exercise consolidates them so it strengthens them the cells have been built and then they get strengthened and then they get strengthened and then they get strengthened again okay so that's one of the things about this but it's all good it's all great the the upside is is a lot of the things that help people besides the how because um real animator training is the how okay and everybody wants to know how right well i've given you the best how you're ever gonna get but that still doesn't guarantee uh that you're gonna get success we can say why it's the best how that that exists out there i'll categorically state it i'm not afraid i think it shits all over richard williams survival kit right it's the best that's my view of course i built it i would say that right but that's what it is i put my heart and soul into this thing but i still can't guarantee results you say well you just said it shits all over the survival kit how well because it isn't just the how that's going to get you through it's also your attitude when you do it it's your attitude your thing of like your commitment to completion basically i'm gonna do this i'm gonna trust it i'm gonna follow it along until the end and the thing is is, is we've always been taught that it's good to question yes it is good to question sometimes but the thing is curiosity does does did kill the cat in in, in another sense so you've got to be able to just turn that down a little bit and allow things to work in order to give yourself a chance because you people, especially self-training themselves on the internet, have been fed a lot of junk from people who just don't have a clue how to draw or how to animate. But because people are, it's free, it's easy and it's accessible and it's popular, people are going to be watching the first thing they find because they're in a hurry to learn and they they they're basically drinking poison does mixing the color and blending the color the same the first thing i can tell you is i am not an expert on color i can color i know a little bit about it but i don't teach it i teach drawing and animation um so i can tell you that mixing the color and blending the color is not the same thing as i understand it because mixing a color is say you want a flesh tone right so you're going to mix a bit of um, peach a bit of carmine red a bit of burnt umber maybe a tiny bit of phthalo blue to get that green quality you know that's mixing your flesh tone right then you're going to want to blend your darks to lights you're going to want to blend your you know say you've got a wash in the background i'll put a bit of uh, i'll have a, a green but the green isn't the default green so you're going to have to mix a bit of blues and yellows right and then lay it down but then you want that green becoming an orange right so you're going to have to mix a you know, mix a bit of red and yellow because the the solid orange in the tube of the paint isn't quite to your liking so maybe i've made my point right so you mix it and then you blend it is a different thing blending is is a seamless transition from one thing into another mixing is creating the color you want that's the way i understand it okay i can paint i can color but i don't really teach it because it's not what i've ever been 
I have been paid to do it, but not really as much as I've been paid to do storyboarding, character design, animation, direction. These are the things, layout. These are, these are the, my true professional 20 years of industry, high level industry background, which is why I don't like to uh, talk so much about coloring. And I always say, go to Aaron Blaze, go to Aaron Blaze about that you know he he is you know to my knowledge there's a lot of traditional media painters on youtube giving great lessons as well but i don't i don't know so i just say you know go to aaron blaze i mean because i like the guy and he's good and he's proven his record so yeah you know he does animation as well but of course i'm gonna talk about me myself when it comes to animation i'm not gonna tell people you know you can uh, if you want to but I'm gonna say I feel I do a better job but I would say that and I think many of you think that too uh, who have bought his course and are joined mine but the thing is is when it comes to painting I would say I don't do that at all go to that guy he's a master right okay right so let's uh, let's continue with uh... <laughs> this now kevin silver has got his uh i don't think i'm i'm just gonna carry on looking at the wall i'm not really gonna um do a uh breakdown drawing today there you go frilled mayfly has got a suggestion for color as well my complete character turn around in line okay so kevin silver see charlene Charlene replied me, your advice is well needed. Thank you so much. It's good to be reminded what really matters. I do need to loosen up like I do with my gesture and play drawings. Yeah, just loosen up your attitude as well. Not not really um, so much your drawing when it comes to solid drawing. Just just be, be, be easier on yourself. So Kevin Silver, um, I had some fun with this lecture. It gave me motivation and the belief to do better. See, Kel Kevin Silver is the perfect example. Kevin Silver is someone who has worked his way through the uh, Advanced Archive. He's now finished, I believe, this is the last lecture series in the Advanced Archive. Um, or, you know, no, there's more. He's got to do a dialogue test. But he's pretty much taken it as far as he's going to take it. And he has struggled at the very beginning with drawing more so than he has with animation but what i really love about kevin silver is he is excellence he has a commitment to completion and somehow you know you know i never would have seen him like w w when when at the very beginning in the basics archive to see him proportioning a guy like this and getting it turning around like this i would you know it would have been a big ask but here he is he's done it now is it perfect no it's not but it's it's really good kevin well done well done it's really really good um it's actually um it's actually uh in in some places you've really managed to get the transition like the way you've got the tricep coming here turning into the bicep it's extremely you know you've really managed to follow that video and understand that concept You've really managed to follow the video and get those abs pretty much in, in, in a solid direction. Where we are losing it is the belt, okay? The belt and the center line of that belt and also how the belt transitions from front to profile. You see it dips and then, you know, then, then you got that dip in the back, right? So the belt is kind of off, right? Also, the hardest part of this lecture is the feet. Now, you actually have done a pretty good job with the cheat because it's a cheat when we turn his feet around. It's an absolute cheat, and I show you how to do that. But what what we have got is is a un, the sizing of the legs do grow and shrink a little bit, right, in relation to one to the other, um, and the boots, the cuffs on the boots are a little bit out, right. So they're small there and they get big and climb up his leg hair. Then they get small and travel down his leg hair. Um, the face is not bad at all. All right. 
it's uh, the face is not bad at all. So I can see where the previous lecture on the head turn really helped you with the face. So Charlene, essentially after doing that head turn, you're going to be doing this. So you're going to be doing the same thing all over again, right? So that's why I'm saying don't, you know, go through the door and find another door, which will be this exercise, which is the same thing all over again, right? So Kevin Silver di did the head and he's consolidating the information, but did the same thing all over again. Um, so actually, Kevin, this is, you know, for the most part, um, there are irregularities in there and there are plenty more than um, what just the ones that I talked about, but it's futile to just keep on talking about all of those. What this is, this is a, this is another victory for you. And I think this is going to help your drawing even more uh, because you've, one of the things that I think you've struggled with, Kevin, is because you come from a cartoon network kind of inspired background where char characters are like this, right? Flat flat characters right with noodle like bodies one of the things you've struggled with when you've tried to do your hand eye coordination is is, is is even though you're doing silhouette you've struggled with structure so hopefully by understanding this body and understanding like things like the abdominal sheath on the pelvis you know we cover a little bit of anatomy you know the two on the rib cage you know and then we, we cover all that. So understanding all this structure, you know, even down to the serratus anterior coming along the side here. So I feel that this is really going to, it'll be interesting to see what your gesture drawing is going to be like after this exercise. Because I feel this is going to help you. This is also going to help you with your life drawing. Because this is this is this is quite dimensional for you. Um, yes, you're following my lecture, but hopefully, as you've gone step by step through it, you've had you've had a better understanding of dimension, and all the time your proportions are getting better and better. Right? I'm going to always talk about this because I think it's going to hit home. That at one time you were doing the A M B stick man, you were doing the A M B stick man like this that guy who was walking in that martial arts walk he literally had a head like this it was really cute it reminded me of virtual fighter kids actually um but you were proportioning the stick man whose head was like this big into this right now you're kind of almost almost getting natural proportions so that's actually uh, a major success for you in my opinion Angela Walker is on the double suspension gallop looking good Angela but I, again now with these things it's good for you to post the front and back together at least and I say the same to Pedro because that's where the that's where the real challenge lies because you're familiarizing yourself there's not much I can say you're just kind of like learning some poses but when you see those poses together with the front and back, that's when you can really start to make a judgment on those. Junior Silver, the basic pendulum. I think Junior might be a training library member or he might be doing the free lectures because this is the one of the free lectures. It looks good, Junior. It's got its own kind of... Uh, vibe to it like the s curve of the pendulum is uh is it's got its own vibe to it but it all works you know i'm not gonna you know it isn't exactly the way i draw it but i don't care because you've understood the weight you've understood the timing and what's more important is is the, the that piece of string feels like it's the right length all the way through it's got a lot of weight that is awesome this exercise is not really shown, unfortunately, and it just, oh, it's the same one, okay. Yeah, so I don't know if you're just following the basic free exercise given in this group, or if you're library or not, I'm sorry. Uh, there was a time I used to know each and every library member, but as it's increased in size, 
um, you know, it's it's impossible to to know who's library or who's not unless unless they're doing exercises that aren't free. Um, but that's really good, Junior Pedro. Again, um, not much I can say about this. Uh, I commented to you before. Let's see the front and back together, okay? Um, my first ske sketch scene of my shot says Roll Stowey. I don't know. Again, this is not animation, AMB animation stuff, but it looks like he's trying to learn. He's trying to do something good. So get out. Shut up. Can't stand that, right? Sorry, roll. I was more talking about the ad. I just hate it when I come on the thing and there's an ad there. Okay, here's the thing. What I say to you, roll, is I I don't know. I don't think you're a real animator training library member. I remember your name, but I don't really remember you doing any exercises from the the library. Forgive me if you are, but I don't. Uh, I, I just remember the name maybe from the group or maybe you've sent me a message every now and then. This is a typical piece of animation that I would say is more based on what we learn in today's world of puppeteering. Um, you're doing kind of generic things like dipping his head. Um... But there's no, and you, but everything is just more or less sliding into place. So his arms slide back, right? His arms slide back, and then his arms slide forward, holding the gun. So again, we're we're more thinking about the volume of keeping those arms and the gun solid, rather than actually having the character act, right? So, um, again. Now he's dipping his head down and he's putting the gun together, okay? So he's rotating his head to us, which is good. But of course, there's no real... What's going on with his body doesn't really emphasize anything. There's no hunched over pose, right? So if I had a guy who was looking with a gun, right? Let's just say he's here, All right? So I, I'm gonna start with, with, with I'm not gonna put a cartoon drawing in here. I'm just gonna start with something like this, right? So the first thing that I'm gonna think about is, is yeah, you've got, you, you don't, the anticipation, you're probably gonna wanna bring his head up a little bit to show that he's actually looking at something, right? Then we're going to straighten that. Look at what's going on with the back here, right? Like this. Now, as you bring his head up, you're going to make him more kind of assertive. So I'm thinking about body language here. I'm not thinking about sliding the arms and just creating movement. See, this is why I call what I teach a real animator training and not, uh, you know, animation is the illusion of life, not the illusion of movement, right? But, but today's digital puppeteers are just about sliding things around, right? So here, I might even want to play with this, but depending on a cartoon, if you're doing a cartoon character like what you're doing, you're probably just going to want to have a nice line in his spine, right? So he's, he's going to look up here, and he's just going to lower the gun. This is called an opposing action, right? So the anticipation is, is this is going this way, and this is going this way, right? You look at what your guy's doing. Um, right, he just lowers his head and lowers the gun straight into there while he takes aim. Right? Why that's not playing? Right. So there, he lowers his head and he lowers the gun to take aim. Then there's a little bit of follow through and offset afterwards and straightening off the back so i'll give, give you points for that that's good but then the thing is to see you got the anticipation here so now he's gonna lower his head right we can lower his head like this we can then think about bringing the gun up to take aim like this right 
So now I'll think about taking these arms. Now I'll think about this other arm here, right? You really want to think about the pose, right? So if he's lowering his head here. Right. So then he's going to bring, he's going to get even lower like this, right? Look at the wave in the back. Look at the wave in the back, right? It's all based on this stuff, right? So this is where he's gonna he's gonna lower his head like that. Bum bum bum, right? Now he's gonna come up, right? And this is what this is what you have done right, right? Which which is what what which is what I think is good. Is he's gonna come up here like this and what I will do is, is I will accentuate the rising of that head right and although that arm is being held with the gun what I like is is what you have done but again you're focusing more on is is you you've created it coming outwards a little bit bum 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 and then you've got it coming in right in like that but then i would play with the shoulder really bringing that in so that way i would push it more maybe have the brim of his hat going the other way right to play with these things right so keep that straight there bum 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 right so now we've got the anticipation right the aim and the bringing it up right and it can be cartoony right because all of this is in here I can exaggerate now right and what makes it cartoony is just by you know we could if we look at your character right it's just right so he's around he's got a cartoon nose so this this all makes it cartoon right so he's round in his head here he's got this cartoon nose like this right so then here we're gonna play i'll have him more in a profile i'll have his i'll have his mouth anticipate out a bit right right like that and here we'll bring his we'll bring his eye and we'll close the other eye right I know in Pocahontas it says both eyes open right but for purpose maybe we'll bring his chin in here like this boom 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 right and we'll keep that eye closed right. right so it does it really doesn't matter right it's all and then this again then can be done with a body i can make his body fat right like this then suddenly like you know so as long as you get these principles right you're gonna get stuff but if you're like I said like all beginners you're focusing on the solidity you're focusing on the volume so it doesn't matter whether you've drawn it by hand your mentality is that of a of a digital puppet puppeteer like you're just sliding things around using shift and trace to keep it solid right um, we don't want to do that when we're using the most powerful medium in the world which is hand-drawn animation hand-drawn animation is the most powerful medium of animation it you're the, you're the most free you're the most uh unrestricted limitless problem is is you're only limited by your ability so if you don't learn these laws then you come to it with a limited mindset you're only ever going to create limited animation right but it looks like a fun project um so i wish you the best with that hopefully you'll be able to take away some points pointers that I've given uh, on that. Gerbis is 
done the well we've hit the three hour mark i'm trying to fit in everyone i don't know if i can i'm supposed to be resting my throat i'm not a hundred i think i might come and do another stream so travis if you're still online i'm gonna talk about your book but not on this stream okay because i might do another feedback stream possibly tomorrow or whatever where we'll do some drawing and other stuff as well so i'm gonna start with gerbis's head turn tomorrow I think three hours I'm gonna I'm gonna have to call it um, I'm gonna have to call it today because um, I'm getting I think I'm getting pretty knackered now <laughs> uh, I've just healed my throat I don't want it to to get out of whack again all right so uh just to remind you the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation is the real animated training library at amb animation where a lot of people have been doing the exercises you've seen in here go to ambanimation.com click on real animated training you will see be treated to a whole host of videos a whole host of testimonials also important this shit for brains logo who this is not for okay um click on join now you will also see more examples of amazing some... work from people like travis and life fantasy and selena and frilled mayfry in this video people in the chat so you don't have to take my word for it you can ask them uh just how amazing this place is um training archives are where it's really at this is the stuff you see people following is the step-by-step -step lectures you can get them in bundles and save yourself a ton of money or you can just buy whichever archive you want and finish whatever you feel like right one at a time basically these are step-by-step -step videos that you have to follow along with as you see people doing in this group uh the walk cycles the flower sacks basically basics archive is all about bouncing balls swinging pendulums and walk cycles with a stick man and head turns with a stick man intermediate archive is all about the flower sack, the laws of life. Basics archive is the laws of movement. Intermediates is the six laws of life. Flower sack, uh, the quadruped uh, cycles, the advanced stickman cycle. Um, anatomy is all about the human skeleton because the joints are where it's at, and it's a basic introduction to helping you understand the human body, which is essentially the Rosetta Stone to all locomotion um then you have the advanced archive where you see people like charlene and uh kevin silver uh, doing the character turnarounds working to model drawing actual characters as opposed to flower sacks and stick men and then you got the random lectures which is not step by step they're called pick up and play that's why they're more subsidiary material to all of these powerful lectures that you're learning if you're getting a little bit bored or fatigued from doing the intensive training uh, these are here to uh, give you some demonstrative implementation of the laws being executed in these archives the edutainment archive is more relaxed it is entertainment and education which is what a lot of people seem to like but that does mean one thing you're not really gonna be taught how to do it right you're gonna see amazing things in this uh, archive you done. watch That's you watch me make, make a two minute film with this quality animation uh, over 56 live streams right you watch me do that from start to finish we design the characters we design the backgrounds we animate everything of the whole uh, almost two minute film 56 live streams but the one thing I'm not going to lie to you, if you think you're going to learn how to draw and animate to this level over watching these 56 live streams, it ain't going to happen because a lot of what happens in this, a lot of the stuff that you need to learn is foundational from the trainings. Okay, so that's why I call it edutainment. Edutainment is um, extremely different to training. Okay, but it all helps. It all, it's all good. It's all demonstrative it's all tips and tricks and ultimately if people are willing to pay for it it all helps the library it all helps amb animation so i shoved them in the edutainment archive for those of you 
who aren't so serious to do the training. All right, that is the real animator training library. Right, um, before I go, let me just see <coughs> what has been going on in the chat. I'm going to have to go soon because I've just got better and I can feel it tingling again. But this tingling is because I've been talking too much, right? Um, the lovely Hervonia Baker, she's there. Um, thank you so much for your feedback. My pleasure, Charlene. Um, Akal the Warrior. <coughs> um, thank you, Dylan Draws. Yeah, we're all feeling better. Um, occasionally these things happen. One of the things I like to do is I don't like to announce to, to you all that I'm feeling under the weather or anything because I know that with, there's a lot of love and um, camaraderie between us. And even though you wish, we, wish me well, you'll still be reminding me and giving energy to the fact that um, I don't feel great. So... One of the things I've learned is energy is energy, whether whether it's given with positive feeling or not. So I'm quite comfortable to talk about it now. I'm over it. But when I'm going through it, I just keep it to myself because I just want it to pass through me. We call it the law of non-resistance. OK, this has happened to me. I don't want to give it energy. Just allow it to pass through me. So if some of you want to know, like, you know where I was, it's because I wasn't feeling great, but I didn't announce it in the group just because I didn't want to give it any energy. Um, for color and painting, okay, that was that. Um, sequential art chick. Was that always Angela's name? Um, okay, uh, AMB, okay, that was Charlene. Turn a few heads. Yeah, again, Travis, I would say it doesn't hurt it. It doesn't hurt it hard, but I would still say that it's the drawing now that you need to get up to scratch because the only thing that's stopping your work from looking pro, in my opinion, even though I haven't talked about it yet, is, is the shapes, the drawing, okay? That's it. But we'll get there. We'll get there, right? Um, bum, bum, bum. In fact, Travis, one of the things I prescribe to you here and now is, is do a few animation breakdowns. When I say animation breakdowns, it's not like the, the character drawings you see. Me. Like if you see the way I break down the Naruto thing, right? You see the way I break down Sword in the Stone. I think you may have access to those archives where I'm breaking down the squirrels from Sword in the Stone in the edu edutainment section. Do some breakdowns like that, okay? It's going to give you an understanding of shape language, real high-level shape language that you're not familiar with. Pick a style you're not familiar with, all right? Pick the, you know, you like Brother Bear, you like the later Disney stuff. Pick the early Disney stuff. The early Disney stuff is, is to me, the, the highest possible standard. Like, we're talking like Sword in the Stone, um, Robin Hood, that kind of stuff, right? Pick those things uh, that are kind of like a little bit different. And then you'll find how suddenly those shape languages suddenly are like they're the Rosetta Stone. Suddenly you start to, you just study. I would say do about 10 different scenes. Okay, 10 different scenes. This will work for all of you. But the reason it'll work for Travis better than, better than most of you is because Travis has been through the entire of my training archives. And he's also, you know, been... Uh, studying on his own effects and stuff and been he's been at this for over three years now so you know you can start by doing animation breakdowns like what you see Akau doing with the princess and the frog anytime and it will be beneficial for you but if you do an animation breakdown when you've got the knowledge that Travis has acquired the 12 laws of animation all these things all these arcs timing slowing in slowing out pose to pose understanding the difference between an extreme a key and a breakdown suddenly doing those breakdowns takes you to a whole new level it makes you uh, this is one of the secrets as to how uh i'm so powerful with what i do is how i can sit down on a live stream and you can say to me 
animate Cowboy Bebop, animate One Piece, animate Baloo and Rebecca from Tailspin Dancing. And I'm like, yeah, fuck, whatever, you know, bang it out, top notch, bro. Why? Because I've studied a lot of stuff, right? And I've studied a lot of stuff where I haven't had to figure out how it was done because I know how it's done because I understand animation law, all right? This is why I say the law is the law and you can't defy it. You just understand it, immerse yourself in it, learn it. Once you have, you know, subconsciously developed the know-how of the law, you don't need to worry anymore and you can just focus on, oh, this shape's become that shape and whatever and they've used this shape and it's all piss easy and then suddenly everything falls into place. So what I'm saying here is, again, it's my experience that I'm sharing with you and I always lead by example. I don't care. Like, I always put my money where my mouth is. I come on a live stream, I say, what do you want me to do? You want me to animate two people dancing? <laughs> Bang. Here's two people dancing. Two characters I've never drawn before in my life, bang, there you go. And it's not only just okay, it's fucking great, right? So the reason, I'm, am I shooting my mouth off? Yes, because I'm illustrating a point that I can get you to that level by sharing what I know with you, right? So that's the whole point of it. That's the whole point of this these live streams. It's like, it's living proof, guys. It can be done. I ain't so different to you. Yes, I've got 20 years of experience in the industry, but that's actually a plus for you because I've had to work through those 20 years. I'm condensing it all, condensing it all. There's no such thing as a shortcut. You gotta work. You gotta work damn hard, but I'm condensing those 20 years of what I've learned, right? Into the quickest possible, most efficient way that it can be that that's what it is it's still going to take you time it's not going to come overnight it's not going to come in a year it's not going to come in three years you'll be pretty darn good like travis or life fantasy but still not going to get it in three years maybe you'll say you proved me wrong i'd love it i'd love it if you did then it would be even better for me, me to say well this guy did it in less than three years so that means it can be done right so um that's the important thing to understand it's like immerse yourself in animation law whether you like it or not whether you say want to want to cut me all this shit stupid what is it spin spin or catchphrase oh laws are there to be broken all right go break the law go go break the law go 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 do whatever you want all right fuck off mess your life up mess your animation up go 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 break the law go be happy i'll just focus on the people who want to listen and who want to get the results and you know we'll all be happy with our work you know that, that that's that's the way i see it like immerse yourself in these laws you know laws are there to be broken uh, man man learned to fly yeah but he had to work with the law he didn't break the law he worked with the law you got to understand physics and the law of gravity and understand how to use it in order to go against it if that's your argument so if you don't know anything about post to pose and straight ahead and you've just got some warped idea, if you don't even know what appeal is, most people think they know what appeal and exaggeration are just because they know what the, the English words for it. Fuck bullshit, you don't know anything, right? You don't know nothing. Completely different in the world of animation, right? Appeal, exaggeration, staging. Think you know all these things because you could just get an idea of it? No, you've got to immerse yourself in these things. You've got to truly understand these things if even if you want to claim that you want to break them you're deluding yourself you're not breaking them because you understand them and you're implementing them in order to go against them so ultimately the law is the law animation law is what this is all about animation law is how this works it's everything that's what that r in the back stands for real animator training basically animation law you're gonna be an animation judge jury an executioner all in one when you complete the training library. Um, I hope I don't have to ever do... There's nothing wrong with anime fight scenes. They're quite good fun. And the thing is, is everybody turns their head and goes, wow, and you know, in your, you know inside that they're fucking easy, right? Um...
Get your cats happy. That's good. How about Anne Marie or Annabelle? From All Dogs Go to Heaven. I've done Dr. Doppler before, but we'll do a breakdown tomorrow. I've got some suggestions here. So I might just jump in from one of these suggestions from the chat. Because Gumball is successful, so now every executive and producer uses it for modern cartoons of how adult animation co Who cares, Travis? You got the right idea. You're saying the right things here in your chat. Um, my dog made a huge mess, so I'm going to have to clean that up. It sounds like, you know, Travis is talking about g Gumball and animation. It sounds like you two are talking about the same thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> um... I have a bit of a random question. Modern cartoons today have similar bean mouth squash and stretch. Does anyone here know the origins of it? To me, I you know, there used to be this thing by Ardman Animations called Rex the Runt where they had that, which was a 3D uh, model thing. I just think um, my personal origins of it is Klasky Chupo, the Hungarian abstract ugly dog shit style of drawing which was in Rugrats, uh, the Wild Thornberries. And, um, you know, it was the anti-Disney. It was the anti-quality. You had Simpsons, which was the start of it. Um, the, the beginning of the, the rise and fall of the Hollywood empire. You see, they basically killed the quality that was Disney. And now those guys run Disney. Um, I don't care whatever people are moaning about Disney's woke agenda, this and that. I don't care. Look, I care more about the quality of the drawing, not the agenda. I mean, uh, politics comes and goes. Who cares? Today's fashions are tomorrow's. T today's sins are tomorrow's fashions. That's the way the world works. I don't care. All I care about is, is, is the quality of the animation good? Is the drawing good? No, they killed it. They killed it. You know, you started having the show called Doug, Disney's Doug. Where was the Disney in that? This is the 90s, by the way, right? Recess, Disney's recess, the school's up. Where was the Disney in that? The virus had already entered the building, the mouse house, and the quality was beginning to die from within. So that's my personal thing of it. I, I don't, you know, it's, uh, I blame just a lack of quality in search of you know eco economy and what do you do when you when you've got money and power money and power is neither good nor bad so i'm not don't think for an instant that i'm claiming it's bad just to those of you right money and power simply gives those who are able to in put a message uh, a louder voice when we agree with that message, we don't have a problem. So if Milk Carl is doing great animation and that's being put out there, I don't have a problem if the money and power is giving me that message. Maybe somebody else does, but that's the world. You like coffee, I like tea. I like tea, coffee, you like tea. That's the way the world works, right? So we can't get into opinions. Everyone has them. We can only get into facts, right? So eventually... The money and power went towards the Klasky Chupo. It's faster, it's easier. We don't have to have people that can draw and animate so well, but we need to sell this style. We'll keep shoving this style out there so people get used to it. Then we'll not only start to get people used to it, we'll start to run down the higher style. We'll call it dated. We'll call it cheesy. We'll call it old-fashioned. We'll call it uncool and we will make this message as loud as possible we'll associate this style with video games with toys with all kinds of cool things for teenagers people kids who don't want to be kids anymore who want to be adults but they're actually kids so we'll call the the old well-drawn stuff childish uh non-adult which is what the whole question about is why do they make these adult animations, these bean mouth things? Because, you know, that's what happened. You know, 
There's an old saying by the Babylonians, show me the child of seven and I'll show you the man, because the first few formulative years, that's where the paradigm and mentality is built, and most of them carry it over. So people think the high-quality, well-drawn Disney stuff is childish, it's cartoony babyish, it's good cartoony, it's not even cartoony. You look at Baloo and those Robin Hood and the way they've got musculature and anatomy, that's real cartoony. You look at Scrooge McDuck, I've heard people say a lot of good things about the new DuckTales, I just can't look at it. Asking me to look at that is like looking at goat porn for me, it's just fucking disgusting. The, 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 the drawings are non-existent, it's just filth. I just can't look at it. I don't care how good people tell me the story is. Also, I don't agree that it's a good story. I mean, I saw this video talking about what they did to the character Doofus. Doofus was a sweet, uh, charming, you know, character. Now he's some sort of like digger, a certain kind of young adult. So like, I don't, I, you know, as I said, that's opinions. But the fact is, the drawings are shit. The drawings are absolute shit. They don't even measure up to the hack TV grade drawings of the 1980s original, right? Because they weren't that strong either, but at least they were strong designs based on designs, classic Disney drawing, cartooning. You had to have some cartooning knowledge. You had to have some skill to be able to do that stuff. So it's not cool. It's not cool to be skillful. It's not cool to have high standards. It's not cool to exemplify the craft at its highest level. And the masses are always running around like headless chicken, looking for content to consume. Snap, 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 snap. You know, pecking the ground all the time, pecking the Netflix, pecking whatever these companies throw at them. So, of course, they're going to buy into that. So that's why I don't care about mainstream anymore which is what you guys are talking about mainstream who gives a shit we live in the most amazing world right now you know you look at the hollywood hollywood has to drum up all this kind of like circus because nobody gives a shit nobody's watching the oscars anymore right how do they get people to talk about the oscars right times are changing people have people have got choice people have got choice so Yes, I'm going to be making content. You're going to be making content. Is it going to be massive mainstream? Who gives a shit? The fact is, is you will have a market. You will have someone who you can affiliate with. So I'm not interested in catering for people who are so blind that they can't look at a good drawing and a shit drawing and know the difference or understand what's better. I'm only interested in people that want to see high quality hand drawn animation. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's why I'm here. That's what this is all about. If other people are not interested in that, fine. There's so much stuff out there. It's great. So it's not about making making myself fit in with something that I don't want to fit in with. Or you feeling you're going to have to fit in with something you don't want to. This is what this whole thing about needing a job, wanting a job, accept me, accept me. Well, if you're an artist... You, you know, a, a job is possibly the lowest possible standard that you'll get to because you look at any real artist out there, they're, in, they're independent individuals. That's what makes them artists. Then a job's worth, you know. Um, just this morning, I got a message. Um, where is it? Storyboarding availability ASAP from one of the leading uh, studios in London, England, Nexus Studios. I don't do that anymore. I don't do that anymore. Let someone else do it. Because I consider myself what the R in the back is, a real artist, a real animator. You know, um, I'm sure there are plenty of people out you love to be in that opportunity. But as I said, like, I share my experience with you. I, I walk the talk. Like, this is what I've come to know. I don't claim that what I'm saying here about, you know, if you like industry stuff and I don't, that's an opinion. I don't claim that to be fact. But what I do claim is when somebody asks me about a certain style of drawing, 
and I've worked for Klasky Tupo, by the way. I've worked there where I've had to, they've had to ask me to do these really shit drawings. They, I was actually offered a job in Hungary to go and work in Klasky Tupo. I can't remember what the series was about. It was about something about these really big fat women that never got made. Um, I think it was based on the drawing and artwork of a woman called Beryl or something like that. But um, about these really huge um, women in, you know, on the beach or something. Uh, I didn't take the job because at the same time I wasn't I, I wasn't happy when I was in that studio because every drawing I was doing was a high quality Disney-esque drawing and they would don't know. We don't want that. We want grotesque. We want grotesque. We want grotesque. Okay, there's a market for that. But now I have a choice. I don't have to be part of that market, you know? So, and that's essentially what I'm saying to you guys. You have a choice. Some of you feel you don't have a choice. I'm telling you, you have a choice. You can either agree or disagree. That's fine, but you have a choice. But don't always look at the mainstream. It's funny because people don't even listen to their own advice. Most of the people I know always like to take digs at popular musicians like Justin Bieber that it's, oh, that's so rubbish, that's so low, it's so bad. But, but it's the most popular stuff out there. So why don't you like, why don't you want to be accepted by it? So why are you treating your art like that, right? So you're already at loggerheads. You're wanting to be part of a group that you don't really respect or enjoy. So just be happy that there's a wider community for you. And you can thrive as an artist. You really can. If you tap into that niche and become good at it. Essentially become good at doing what you want to do. Right? Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. All right, and on that note, we've gone on for three and a half hours. Um, oh dear, sorry to hear that, um, live fantasy. Yeah, well, it's all about tech, tech, uh, you know, animation is no longer art anymore. CMX power. Back in the day when I read the reviews, when the first Shrek movie came out, they were talking about how advanced the animation was. I said, advanced animation, really? It looks like a piece of shit to me. Let's read what they're calling advanced animation. They were talking about however many million hairs were on the donkey. And you're, you're seeing that many hairs moving in every frame of animation. And this is what... I said, that's not animation. That's a fucking... Who says that's that? There's, that, there's nothing to do with the 12 law. There's texture mapping. It's texture mapping. It's fur uh, engineering. It's like, so now whenever they talk about animation, now I see all these posts on LinkedIn about Toon Boom talking about these primitive older shows that they've updated. Primitive? Fuck you. Those people who drew on those older shows are, are light years ahead of the morons you've got pushing mouses or pens with your stupid, weak little sliding puppets. That's primitive. You think the technology, this is it. We're living in a Hans Christian Andersen world. If some of you know the story of the Nightingale, where the emperor liked this beautiful original song of this Nightingale, and then some man built an artificial Nightingale, and he was so fascinated with that that the real Nightingale went. But in the end, he realized this machine is just nothing. It's, it's just empty. There's no life to it. It's just garbage. You know, it can be easily recreated. Just like we're living in a world where people can make Snapchat filters of Pixar models of their faces. That's how easy it is to create a Pixar animation now. Like, to, to me, I don't see the difference between some of those Snapchat filters and, you know, that turning red thing. That God, God, that looks like an absolute dirt. I mean, you know, so again, that's just my opinion, but it's not what I do. I don't consider that animation. It's puppetry. It's three-dimensional. It's not even real. It's digital dimensional puppetry whether it's two dimensional or three dimensional and it's all creating an illusion which is what this is all about whether you draw it or whether you create a puppet it's all an illusion so i concede that but for me 
you can never nobody can ever take away that when i make a mark or you make a mark that mark is fucking unique no one else made it it is unique you're not moving somebody else's shit around you're responsible you made the mark you're the artist simple as someone sits there says i did that you did that what do i find impressive about that i find the the modeling impressive i find the way the lighting and the textures are impressive i even like the design as to the way it moves everything fucking moves like that what's special about that bouncing from one pose to another pose doing this with the hands you didn't even do the follow-through the fur dynamics and the, the the programming did that right so what am i supposed to give you acknowledgement for you did the bare minimum you moved and bounced the puppet around to some timing tricks that you programmed in your head you didn't even draw it you didn't even do the follow-through and overlap you didn't do anything you stood down you made a film of yourself and then you copied your poses of that film of yourself and said i refer to live action what did you actually do that was any good really please i i want to respect you but try to understand it from my point of view as somebody who actually draws and animates this thing and does everything that understands all these laws what did you actually do that actually looks good there because if you think I'm going to be impressed by a little bit of anticipation and an arc here where you're going to change the line and then you're going to bob the head and bob the head a couple of times while circling the hands when you settle that's a fucking trick it's a parlor game that everybody does in animation this day and age and that's why no character has its own personality everybody's doing the same thing why why uh, uh you know it's every you look back at the old disney films yes sometimes baloo from robin hood and little baloo from jungle book and little john would be the same character acting the same yeah but it's almost like an actor but it, no two characters in the one same movie all do the same actions you look at a pixar movie they're all fucking doing the same thing they're all doing the same thing they're all like cynically gliding from this pose raising an eyebrow wiggling their heads doing this with their hands I don't see it you know that's why I'm here I'm here to restore the individuality I'm here to say to anybody who sees themselves as an artist who values drawing who values the uniqueness you are unique on this earth there is no one like you no one you are the one right and if you value that then you're gonna and you value the marks you make with your pencil or your even whether it's a digital line or a lead physical line you're making that mark right that unique mark is coming from that unique person unequaled limitless untapped potential you're not relying on anyone else's mark even if you're taking someone else's design you are interpreting that design and putting a little bit of your uniqueness in there you're not confined you're not imprisoned within someone else's digital model or anything like that and this is why hand-drawn animators are being kept back they are being kept down because they are the real realest of the deal the rawest most purest for artists out there in this medium and they're rare they are rare they're not a dime a dozen and hollywood knows that the industry knows that it's hard to find them and when you find them you got to pay them well so let's just eliminate them and just make this make everything so fucking standardized and easy to do that soon you won't even need an operator you'll be able to look in a camera and create the animation yourself and that's where it's going that's exactly where it's going 
And that's why I love what we do now. And I don't liken anything that we do to the industry. Because what we do is art. Real art. Real animation. That's the way I see it. And yes, there are some of you that love the industry and want to go to the industry. And the, the skills I teach do transition into that. But, you know... You don't really need to go the full hog. You don't really need to learn how to draw well or anything. As long as you learn the basic, what's in my basics archive, that'll help you with that easy shit. Um, uniqueness and individuality are lacking in animation today. Let's work towards unique styles. Look, nobody's asking. Here's the thing. By, you are unique by default, Batch. You don't even need to work towards it. You're unique by default. You like to draw Sonic the Hedgehog. You like to draw, so don't force yourself not to draw that. But here's the thing, when you draw that, it comes out in the only way you can put it out there. It, you know, your unique way. That's it. I animated Baloo and Rebecca from Tailspin Dancing. It's unique. You're not going to see that in the show. Right? It might look like it, but you're not going to see that in the show. That's why you look at a Glenn Keane animation, you know who did that. You look at the digital puppetry today, you don't know who did any of it. There might be some fanboys out there who read up and religiously go, oh, oh yeah, I really recognize his work. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, on that note, Three hours, 40 minutes, I think we did fairly well. We didn't even do a drawing in today's live stream, so it's going to be an ugly thumbnail. Maybe I'll put one of my beautiful face. I don't know. It's going to be an ugly thumbnail. <laughs> so let's, uh, you know, let's do the character breakdown tomorrow. Um, or when I'm, you know, I might I might rest my voice up and do the do another stream later on in the week. And I'll see you all on the next live stream thanks for joining me remember keep it real and i'll see you on the next stream bye bye